You know what? You are the picture guy. You yeah, always like, were. Nobody takes pictures, and I mean, nobody. It's an exaggeration, but like, I don't know. In our it, friend group. And also, I started doing making photo albums again. Like, I uh, everyone's got f- pictures on their phone, but I always feel weird pulling my phone out and showing people. Like, I just feel like, I don't know why. I feel like it's. Sh- I just feel show off. I'm like. Get this on the phone. <laughs> Uh, we want to we want to give you guys a, a quick life hack recommendation. Um, if you're from the Toronto area, GTA, um, our lovely listeners, we want to we want to help you out here. As of late, we've been recording a lot more, spending a lot more time in the studio, and because of our lives are a little bit hectic, we're in and out. We never really have snacks and food here, so we uh, partnered up with Tiggy, who is a Canadian app, and uh, recently came to Toronto, and they are an on-demand food delivery service. And also, you can get your COVID test and basically anything else you need. They got a variety of unique products. Uh, basically, anything that you might want last minute, you can go. Go on the app. It's 15 to 30 minute delivery. Yeah, you heard that right. 15 to 30 minutes. We literally order it when we get in the studio before an episode. And before we even sit down to start recording, our food is here. I'd say it even for us, it's always come closer to the 15 minutes and the 30. Like we'll order it and before we can, you know, as soon as we sit down and take our jackets off, our guest gets here, like the stuff is here and like keeps us, I mean, we get drinks, snacks, I mean, anything we really need to kind of, you know, keep us going, it, it comes. The best part is there's no fees, no subscriptions. Um, it Guys, it, it's actually amazing. They have fresh products. And we actually like, you know, we don't waste stuff here. We order what's needed every episode and, you know, we go through it. And then the next time we're back in here, we order more. We don't we don't waste stuff because we sit here and, and go bad. And it's been a lifesaver. And since we love you guys so much, we're going to give you guys a promo code. You knew this was coming. PAL30. Yeah, PAL30. P-A-L 30. Gives you 30% off your first three orders. Yep. Bingo. Boom. Go do it. <laughs> Guys, it, it, and not, not only that, like every, the price of everything is going up. You're going to save 30%. Like, what a no-brainer. Don't, thank us later. You know, Don't even thank us. Just go and do it. Have a so great day. So we'll put the download link in the bio, in the description. So click the unique link. You can download it. Again, and the promo code is PAL30 for 30% off your first three orders. Now get ready for this fire episode. Let's go. We're, Rolling we're, start. We're, we're hot start, baby. We're we've gotten, start. Be, we've gotten better at this. We've gotten better at this. I was like, this. wait. wait I, yeah. no, I like this story. I like where this is going. <laughs> We're, we're pros now. What? Lot, that's, lot actually, hey, no, that's, that's the cue. Get this on the pod. <laughs> no, that's amazing. Okay. Um, Sorry. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Super dope. We kind of roll into it. That we, okay, we cool. do that way now. You should give them a heads up sometimes. Guys. Some people, no, yeah, some great. people say stuff to that's them. That's what like, we'll do. We're, you know, from now on, when people walk in with just heads up, hey, once we sit down, just, it just we're, goes, to pretend yeah. we're rolling at any time. Cool. Get okay. them into Get it. Get back into it, George. No, so, um, what was I saying? Yeah, like we, um, you feel I feel weird, feel weird pulling it out. Like yeah. I do it, but then I feel, because I've tra- like I've traveled and I have cool pictures and all this. And people ask me and I'm like, you know, you're at a party and like you're like flipping through your phone. I was like, it feels kind of, I don't know. I just don't like, I don't yeah. love it. Um, and it's always cool. Like when I go to my parents' house or even like my girlfriend, her parents have like just photo ops on the table at all times. Yeah. You flip through, it's really cool. Yeah. So I was like, there's got to be a way to get, make this like, um. Uh, to, to do this in like with these photos. So I found that like Apple has these apps you can use that just make photo albums. So I started producing photo albums. So I did it by year. So I went back to my oh, photo nice. albums 2015, 2016. Like it's taking a lot of time. I'm yeah, only yeah, at like yeah. 2018. I've been Every like, photo from those years? No, like I, I picked. You're curating yeah, it, yeah. You know, trying to be a little bit artistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is it, it? Mixed tiles? What brand? What company are you using? Uh, milk, yeah. Milk? Milk is the brand. Yeah, I've um, seen it, yeah. It's pretty easy to do, but just naturally, like it's, you know, you want to put the good ones in some stuff that, you know, the boys can't sue the boys. You got to be kind of like, you know, yeah. you want to throw everything in there. But yeah. um, anyway, it's, it's a healthy mix. It's good. It's funny. I put pictures like Ricky really hammered and saw me looks yeah. like an idiot, but it's funny because it's, it's like, you know, it's a little bit. Yeah, it's a, a tasteful mix. But when I was doing that, I was I, I've I've also realized that I've stopped taking photos as much. I don't put my phone out as often just to be more present in the moment. Yep. But as a result. You have less content and less stuff, and you know I really miss having that. Um, so anyways, there's a healthy. Short. I think there's a, a healthy mix between being in the moment and capturing the moment. Um, I know, like, there's a huge push towards, like, you know, why are we? Why do we have our phones out this modern era and blah blah blah. Yeah. But the reality is, like, now we can go back and look at all those times. There was a lot of times, like, 
I have a two-year-old son, so as he's growing and doing and learning new things, I'm like taking photos. But in that moment, I'm, I'm stopping myself. I'm putting my phone in my pocket. Well, no, like let me actually enjoy this. Yeah. But now, eight months later, I go back, oh my God, do you remember when he did this for the first time? So there's like there has to be still a healthy balance sure. to it all. And, it, and that's the beauty of having this, these cameras and these, these incredible computers in our pocket is that yeah. we can do that. It, it's nice. Like, don't get me wrong. I like it. Um, like, I still do pull it out and, and take the photos. Um, but yeah, like I just even like now, like we have a, we have a trip coming up. Like we've kind of planned like a summer trip with all our friends and everything, which I haven't done in I don't even know how long. Yeah. So I was like, it'd be cool to like bring a camera and just like actually snap photos and you know get some of those. So I'm not vlogging right now. I'm just like carrying it with me. But um, do you know what uh, what Joe does? Joe DePace, you know Joe yeah. too. What he does with the disposable, I think that's actually a great idea. And every time I go to Urban Outfitters, I always say, should I grab one? I'm like, ah, no, because I'm just going to lose it or I'm not going to bring it out. But what he does like on nights out or he'll do like one a week, I think. And he just takes pictures, gets them developed, gets the CD so he can put them on his computer. And then he has the digital copies as well. It's like, that's a good idea. Because my problem is anytime I go and I love having pictures. George was my picture guy for the longest time. Still kind of is, which is good. I'm glad he's taking more pictures. I need more content. So this is, this works out really well for me. But I, my problem is I pull up my phone, I go snap a picture, and then it's just like, oh, Instagram. And then it's like, oh, swiping on Instagram. And, and then it's like, oh, let me check TikTok. Yeah. And it's like, next thing you know, Grab 10 minutes, I'm on my phone for 10 minutes while I'm with my friends. It's like, what am I doing? Yeah. So now my, I try not to, if I pull up my phone now, it's either to call or text when I'm with people. It's like, if I'm going to, I'll do TikTok, I'll do Instagram in the background while I'm, you know, in the bathroom or I'm by myself or, yep. you know, those days you're stuck in, I don't know, you're, not, you're in the parking garage of your, while you're waiting to go up or something, like. Yeah, that's what I try and do. Because again, like you said, you, you want to be present in the moment. Do you find that there's too much restriction having an extra device? Because I want to, I want to vlog a ton, and we we talked about this a ton. Sorry, I, I'm pointing. To my wife's here. Big um, shout out, Cass. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk about this a ton about uh, having a vlog camera, having a GoPro, having a small camera like that. But the friction of always yeah. having to have it, having it charged, having to upload from it, and all this, it's. I feel like it's too much of a thing. Do you, do you notice that? It's um. And then I don't tell care about your burner phone after. <laughs> okay. It is. Um, yeah. It, it's like, that's the difficulty is like carrying it around and having now a phone and having this thing. That's not it's small. It's probably a really small camera, but it's not exactly small. So yeah. like, you know, I can't carry that. If I'm like in Florida walking around, I'm going to put it in my jean pocket. Yeah. It's already a thousand degrees down there. Like I'm going to carry a brick in, in two pockets. Yeah. Um, so it is a bit of a hassle, but like I'm now I'll take it when I know there's something like I carried it when I was walking cause I knew this would be here. It's kind of cool. Gotcha. So I have this little bit of like a memory. I can keep it, whatever. Um, I think more so like if I go on vacation, carry a little like cross body bag, yep. keep it in there. A little purse. Yeah. A little <laughs> man purse, whatever. But, uh, they're fashion, it's a good man. point. It is hard. Like, and I mean, you put out like, you put out great content. Like you, you know, you post like really nice videos and take photos of stuff you do. You do want to be carrying around your pictures and carrying a camera and a GoPro. That's a lot of your sorry, just, pictures, your, your paintings, and your art. Yeah, um, I just find it gives me an excuse to to have something else to do and not do it because yeah. like, it's a, just a layer of friction. That's Absolutely. I, but I I do I do love the concept. Yeah, yeah. No, I like, honestly think like if I mean if it wasn't a burden on you, I think like you doing it would be great. I mean, you are really good at like your presence on social media is is really good. Like it is actually it's something that is enjoyable to watch. So, I mean, if you did do that, I'm telling you, like, I, I think you would do really, really well as a personality, but also because you just, you have a very cool lifestyle. Yeah. Um, it's fine. I was and say, I feel tell, like you should be. I was going to say, tell Cassie, but I'm like, ah, she's got something more important to carry around with her. AJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, I got the camera. Oh, shit. Where'd AJ go? That's well, right. speaking of which, how's, uh, how's he doing? I haven't, I, I don't He's, go on as much social media. I don't see, I don't see him hitting bombs well, anymore, but. Swing. No, it's, is it uh, nice? Motion now. It is, um. Yeah, <laughs> it's dangerous. Um, no, he's he's growing so fast. Like anyone that's a, um, you know, you talk to parents that have older kids now, like, oh my god, they grow up so fast. Like literally, he's, he's only two and a half, right? He's not. He turns three in August, but that that's a very fast two and a half, and they're already so grown. Like full conversations, and he's telling me what he wants to do and what he doesn't want to do and what he likes and what he doesn't like, and like he's ordering his own dinner like at a restaurant. Well, it's like a crazy concept. He, can, he doesn't hit off the tee anymore. He can hit like pitches. Yeah, like it's it's you know, like soft toss or like yeah. you're throwing him like. Oh, I so now, actually last night I started throwing overhand to him, but we've been Jeez. going to a facility like one of the facilities that I used to train at. So we've been going a couple times a week, like whenever we can get out, and uh, so like we're actually in a base with with like sixteen to eighteen year old kids. And he's the only two year old <laughs> in there. It's hilarious. Everyone's like, "What's this kid doing? Like, what, what's going on here?" But uh, so I I started pitching to him, and he like he just has fun. That's and amazing to me. 
like to not sound like a dad, like as long as he keeps having fun, then I'm having a ton of fun for sure. And um, and baseball, like we 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 mentioned this a little bit on our last pod, but like baseball is the one thing that I can properly teach him. I played baseball at a pretty high level. I coached at a pretty high level, so I can I can properly I know what I'm talking about. Other sports, if it was hockey or soccer or anything, I would have to hire a coach. So baseball, I'm lucky that he likes it because I can like be with him at, at, for every step of the way and teach him properly. So he's mechanically he's i'll show you videos but like he's very funny because like mechanically he knows what he's doing really and he, like, he takes a step and sw- it's just funny come on uh, how's his funny. defense does he, this, does he lift his front foot when he oh swings? yeah, yeah. He, takes Get full, out of here. he takes a full step and swing it's, he's probably it's better awesome. than i am yeah it's, it's, i actually played baseball it is it is funny it is it yeah, is how's awesome. his fielding though he's he's now he doesn't he's an offensive strength, player right doesn't have the strength to close a glove yet so okay. we're, we're working on bare hand stuff and and, okay. and some stuff like that but yeah, so, this, this, like the fundamentals that, and but, everything. But pitching, like I don't want—I was a pitcher, so I, I don't want him to be a pitcher because he's going to be probably my height, which is not very tall in the major leagues or major leagues baseball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I want him to, you know, be an infielder or middle infielder, and so he'll he'll be all right. <laughs> That's we'll honestly fun. amazing, yeah. man. Well, like, you're sending him when I used to, oh, yeah. those, <laughs> when I used to watch the videos, yeah. I would message him, and like I, it yeah. actually <laughs> brought me so much joy to see it, like yeah. just. Just demolishing the ball, but like one after another after another. Like, he doesn't miss. I just the crazy thing is I just did a video um a week ago where I his three up until from I think it was March first. So March first when he was born, March first last year and March first this year. And I used to think that probably those videos that you're looking at, like when he was first standing and starting to hit, he was hitting well. But now we can't hit in our house. Like we're we're still in the same house. He can't hit in our house because he's just taking paintings off the walls and like Come on. Cr- crushing the the fridge. Coffee God. like just flying and shattering. <laughs> does he like does he get very like does he come to you and say, Hey, I wanna like hit the ball and stuff like that? Or all the time. Like, like it's, it's like his favorite. Well, like we most mornings we wake up and like da da hit, da da baseball. Uh, yeah, of course, let's go. Or like if we're if we're at the house so like we're a little like crazy in this sense. I, I believe that like there's a ton of toys and things that he's gonna learn. So he has his bedroom that he has like all his like little stuffed animals and he has his Lego and all stuff. But like in out in the living room, instead of having like just a bunch of junk and toys, we literally just have a bucket of balls and a tea. Because that's Amazing. what he just wanted to keep Cassie's playing like, with. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Yeah. It was like it was, it was yeah, <laughs> I know it was it was it was our it was it was an idea we had. We're like, what if we just put these this bucket of ball and tea here? Like what would he want to do? And he has a thousand toys. Every, both nuns and everyone, every aunt and uncle's bottom, every toy under the, the sun. So he has it all to play with. But if when he's in the living room, he sees the tea, what would he want to do? And we just noticed he just wanted to keep hitting. So we're like, okay, wow. just keep the tea there. So and that's sort of what did it. And, that, and now it's just grown to like, da da baseball facility? We're we going to the baseball facility? That's what he Come calls on. it. Come on. Da da baseball I'm like, yeah, we're going to the, the baseball facility. facility? Yeah, the base, two and a half, <laughs> baseball eh? facility. And then we always have to go for sushi after. That's his thing. What? Come on. <laughs> and then the kid kicker, lives a better lives than most of us. The kicker, the funniest thing of it is Cass isn't allowed to come. So oh, it's, he, like, it's, like, it's a boy thing. It's a boy thing. He goes, cool. he goes, mama, there's no girls. <laughs> all boys. And we're like, I thought he was joking the first time he said it. He's like, he's like started crying. He's like, no, mama, no. I'm like, okay. So you're not allowed to go. Mama's not coming. No. Wow. He went one time and he literally ignored me. He, would, he wouldn't look at her. He Shut up. Her. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> that's, I, so, that's honestly amazing. Like the fact that yeah. he enjoys it too. Like, you know, you ask everybody, like anyone wants their kid to play, do something that they like. Of course. At the end of the day, I'm or something they weren't good at too, though. For like, sure. Yeah. yeah. And and like, and then the next step to it is like, what I've noticed is like, with kids or developing anything is like anything you do a lot with them, they're gonna they're gonna get better. The the simple reason that he's able to hit off the tee is because he's taken a thousand reps already. He can't skate like so. You know, like I I know other kids that are his age that can skate, and it was like mm-hmm. so. It's it's not especially at those ages. There's they form so easily. So it's like I I, I want to always I always say that to like to parents or to the things like you know whatever we give them a lot of reps in they're going to be good at and that goes to anything in life fun uh, random story so you don't need to teach them how to skate yet there's no point teaching like a three-year-old how to skate also hockey sucks well hockey doesn't suck <laughs> hockey is fun he's but probably not gonna i um so i was <laughs> baseball's way better i was three and a half when i learned to play hockey right yeah. or three when i learned to skate two or three whatever so youngest kid in the league, right? How so you get an award for it in, in uh, No in big life. deal. <laughs> wait, wait, no, 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 no. About to put myself on blast here. No, about to put myself on blast. So I learned to skate at a young age. And like, was I good? Whatever. No. You're three years old. As long as you can stand on the ice and yeah, slowly yeah. walk and not fall, you're fine. Yeah. But I tore, so the first game I played, second game I played. After the third game, my, my mom said I would cry before going to hockey because it was so cold and I didn't want to play. <laughs> so I would literally cry and I'd get on the bench and I'd be crying on the bench. And my mom was like, you want to play? 
Yeah. You were the one that wanted to play because I knew I learned how to skate. Yeah. I wanted to play hockey. Then I would just cry. It came to the point where I would get on the the ice and there were shifts of one minute. So it's a one minute for the lo- first line, second line, third yeah. line, right? And you switch. Yeah. I would get on the ice and I'd make snow angels for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and then after like the fifth or sixth game, I was just crying so much. When I was like, "Hey, you're not gonna play. Can't like, do this why, why you do this?" Yeah. And then looking back, I was like, "I could have won the youngest kid in the ward league, <laughs> but didn't because I just quit." <laughs> oh, but I yeah. love it. No, yeah. Talking about age, like it's I'm learning it now because I want to put him in full baseball, but it doesn't start for another like two years. I didn't start playing baseball till like six, six or seven. Yeah, if you do it, well, well I, you'll coach with me. I'll, I'll help. We'll oh, yeah. coach. We'll oh, coach. Super fun. Yeah, yeah I, I can't we, wait. We, Ricky, we used to coach. Well, Ricky did it more than I did. We used to coach baseball. I don't know if we mentioned. Uh, yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't have as much time to do it at the, at the time. I don't remember why, but I remember we did it for two seasons together. Yeah, so awesome. I, I and did it one. First, I was yeah. like, a, I was a little flaky. The I last did it one. for a season on my own because this is back in university. Because my friend was the commissioner, needed a coach. I was like, oh, how hard could this be? Two nights a week, whatever. Then he liked that I did it again. Then I took a couple years off, and I was like, George, why don't you come do it with me? So me, George, and your brother actually did it with us, Yanni. Did it for a year. Then the second year, he kind of like effed off a bit. But Yanni still actually helped a lot. Then the year after that, I, I went select. I got okay, cool. sewered into going select. <laughs> my, I don't want to do it. The car, like, you He's doing do, parents the whole time. <laughs> the thing was, it's like, okay, in select, in my opinion, okay, it's rep now. You play to win. Yeah. Well, it's like, we didn't play to win. We played to be fair. It's like, yeah. I don't want to play to be fair. I want to put the best kids on the pitch, on the field yeah. at all time. Like, okay, this kid is the best kid. Let him pitch the whole game. Oh, well, you have to let other kids pitch. Well, are we playing to win or are we playing to be fair? Like, if we're playing to be fair, let's play house league. I got no yeah. problem with that. Yeah. I will be fair. We lost the championship one year because I was fair. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I got I no problem. That's fair. house league. Yeah. If we're playing rep, it's like, these are the good kids. We, yeah. we should be playing to win. 100%. But yeah, I'll coach with you. I, uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. I can't, co- I know what I can't do. I know what I can do. I mean, I can teach like kids to play outfield pretty well. Um, but I can't coach third base because I'm too aggressive. I think I remember I sent the kid once to steal home and he cried because like got out. Got <laughs> yeah, out. No, yeah. <laughs> was it? Do you remember I sent yeah. we were playing at our lands? Yeah, I think yeah. was, um, what was his name? The, who's the little Devin. Asian? No, no, yeah. no, no, no. It was a little Asian kid who was um. I can't remember. He was really good. I really liked him. I like I was like took him under my wing. I wanted yeah, to make yeah, him yeah. like a stud. It was really like really eager to play. I forget his name. And there was a play where down by like one, I think. And we were like going like third or fourth inning. Not even, not even, a, not have to get aggressive. But I knew it was kind of quick. And I was like, honestly, you got to steal home. Yeah. And he's like, I just thought there's so many pass balls. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, you got to steal one. home. So, so I called him to go home. And like, I sent him and the kid, like, laid down a swing and it rolled in front. And they went, Aww. they didn't go to first. They came to him. So they like, it was a bit of an aggressive play at home. Yeah, yeah. So bang, they kind of like slammed the tag on him where they could have just. You know, whatever. Yeah. So he felt bad that he got out and he cried. I was like, shit, I should have said that. That's the tough part. Like, like, cry. Yeah. Even so, when I coached to- Select, we were in the tournament. So we didn't make the playoffs, but we in the tournament leading up to the playoffs, like the big tournament. Yeah, yeah. Somehow we made it to the finals. And our coach was one of the moms. She was one of those persons that, you know, she doesn't know baseball, but she watched every YouTube video there was yeah. to, to learn coaching. She had like books upon books. And I was like, like you just got to watch it. Just watch it and just live in the moment and like see what the kids are. So we're, we're, down by one, two men on, one out. So right. this is in the uh, this finals of this tournament, not playoffs, but oh, this okay. like this big tournament yeah, right yeah, before yeah. playoffs. It's like whoever wins the tournament wins the playoffs for some God, reason, yeah. right? That's what people think. So she uh, guy on first and second, one out, right? And we're in, like the heart of our lineup too. We're, so we're all hyped up. We're like, hey, we got this. A single ties the game basically. Yeah. Doesn't she send the guy on second to steal third? Oh. And we're like, okay, well, like. I get it because, like, again, stealing at the age of like 10 and 11 is pr- like pretty, you're, pretty you gotta, easy. It's a 50 50 chance. Yeah, if you but, got a fast guy, it's more than a 50 50 yeah. chance. Well, she sends him, he gets fucking caught. Uh, the bench loses it on this lady. And I'm just there. I'm like, I didn't send him. Thank God. <laughs> I was <laughs> thinking <laughs> it. I was thinking it. Yeah. But I didn't send them. Yeah. They're all losing it. So one kid, like, gets ready to go up. Kid strikes out, like, swinging by, like, just things he should have been swinging at. Yeah. Comes back, throws his bat. He's all pissed off. You like looks at the the you mom. Coach, you that, shouldn't yeah. have sent him. You. Sh-. I'm like, yo, it's nothing to do. With yeah, you. nothing to do with you. You swung at something that was so outside. What are you swinging your bat? What are you throwing your bat around for? Yeah. Blaming her. Like, yeah, it's her fault. We got two outs, but it's your fault. The third out. Like, you want to blame her? Look in the mirror too, man. Yo, it's easy to point fingers at others. Like, 100%. let's not play that game, or else I'm gonna point one at you too. Yeah. Like. Coach Ricky Lane. Oh, yeah, man. No, it's, I was like, yo, you're going to blame her? Like, look, she made a call. Sure. It didn't work. You made a call to swing. It didn't work. Is anybody mad at you? No. It's a fucking game that takes... Baseball is probably the, one of the biggest team sports you can have. Yeah. Basketball, one player can win. Like, yeah. you put LeBron James, you're like, 
you're likely to make the playoffs. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Baseball, you could have the best pitcher in the league, the best hitter on the league, and not make the playoffs. Yeah. Well, it's like, Anaheim it's, Angels. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Angels. They remember when we had Doc, yeah, remember exactly when we nothing. had Doc Holiday? Guy was like MVP or like, what was he? What do you call the pit? Cy Young. Cy Young. For like two or three years, he was yeah. like up there. And we never made the playoffs. We sucked every year, even yeah. with him. No, it's true. Baseball is a full team sport. You need the nine offense, nine defense, like one kid striking out. It's like yeah. your, odds are you're going to strike out. Odds are you're not going to get on base. Like, yeah. If even if you're the best hitter, you're still only going what like four hundred, three hundred, three hundred, yeah. three twenty, three for three for ten. You're yeah. in Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, there career. you go. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> if crazy. you get on base, if you hit three out of ten times, you're a great hitter. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a good it's a good analogy for life too, though. Like I, I'm maybe I'm like you if you think about it, putting shots on net, right? To be like the best at something in a sport, like you can be the best baseball player and hit thirty three of every hundred. And like make the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Like you could be very good at your job and in life if you put a lot of shots and you're successful, let's say 30, 40 percent of the time. One of the things that people don't realize, like they're like, well, if I shoot one, I strike out, I'm gonna be shit. Like yeah, most people it's don't. It's about taking the cuts. It's about it's about 100%. repetition. Like we I've been thinking about this concept a lot in a bunch of different areas. Um, like art specifically, sports, health. If I consistently do something, like if you keep going back up to the plate, yeah. you're eventually gonna get a hit. Maybe a single here, a single there. You're eventually going to hit that home run. You just have to give yourself enough opportunities. Mm -hmm. And and like you just mentioned, why it's a, a good you know contrast to life is that too often we we quit too early, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's you have to you have to give it more shots. Like you you got to keep adding sticks in that fire. You never know when it's actually going to catch. Absolutely. And I think that's a and that's a big thing that like I you know I I coached a lot as well when I came home from university. I had all you know these. What university was it? Southern Al Alabama. Alabama State. Alabama State. Yeah. That's it. So. As Alabama State, and then when I came home, the, sorry, the uh, transition before I got a job, I'm like, well, I I was just co I was just taught how to coach and how to be a player. Why don't I coach? So I started a little baseball school, and the school grew quite big. I was coaching like hundreds of kids, all specifically to pitching because I was a pitcher. And it's cool now. That was years ago. Now that was seven, eight years ago. So these kids that were seven, eight, and nine years old that have never pitched before, I was teaching how to pitch, are now. A few of them, like three or four now that I've kept up with their families, are going away to like university in the States and playing like they've, they've really kept it. So it's like so awesome to see them grow. And then a bunch of other kids like, don't do anything. But that's fine, too. Man, yeah. it's that's fun. Do you remember but, Tyler? Oh, sorry. No, I was going to add something okay. to your point about the shots, stuff like that. I mean, like it goes without saying, though, I think you're the one of the people I know that is the epitome of that. And I'll never forget the story you told about when you're trying to get into to college or yeah. like college in the States. Yeah. Like, it, I'm not even saying this to like pander to you, but like it was honestly when we were traveling through the States for our startup, it was one thing that I would often it'd pop into my head, probably because we were in America yep, in, in colleges. colleges. But I was like, you know, there's been days where I, we were like, we were just exhausted. Didn't want to go out. Like it was fucking miserable. We're getting shit luck, no doubt, whatever. And I was like, man, if Anthony Richardi can go and email a hundred and something schools yeah. and bump into some guy and that's like, that's how it hit. Like yeah. there's persistence. I'm like, wait, I can get my ass off this thing and get outside today. Yeah. And I, I'm being dead serious. Like that story no, was yeah. like, Still, I, still to this day bulls on mine. You know, one of the best stories told on this podcast. It, yeah. It's still to this day. I have to remind myself of it because I've used that exact concept for literally everything. Yeah. And sometimes I forget. Like, I, like I, I go to myself like, if I'm trying to do something new, like how can I do this? I'm like, let's just reach out to 100 people. Yeah. Let's reach out to 600 people. It was 306 Division One schools. That's and I reached out. I was, I was like, reached out to 306 multiple times and then like then you as you get older and as you do more things you realize well it actually actually has to be more structured the only reason i ended up getting to a couple of them was that i got rejected so many times that i had to actually structure it yeah the but framework from that right and the framework you, you had to be better those strikeouts. exactly exactly but it just it takes reps and then the same when i got all those kids to coach i th it's the same story i emailed every single uh rep so a double a triple a is very like similar to hockey in the baseball structure and I emailed every single A, double A, AA, and triple A coach in Ontario. And I was willing to drive. Obviously, not crazy, but like I, if it was an hour either way from my house, I was going to go there. And I said, for that first summer that I was home, let me coach your kids for free. And I had like 50 teams say yes. And I did that for a summer. Like I literally was a coach for 50 teams because every other, like I would do three teams a night if they were playing in these big things. And I was Jeez. doing them every single night of the week. And then that next summer when I came home from school, I was only home for school for like a month and a half. The next summer, I had unlimited amount of clients because they're like, oh, I remember you from last summer. And it dropped off like, like I don't know, 80% of them dropped off. But all I needed was 20 clients to really make a summer worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. But it all went back to emailing 
you know, 200 teams and 50 said yes. And it's just a, it's a numbers game. Life's math. It's one of the, but it, but that's the, like one of the things that like you have to remind yourself every day. And even you said like sometimes you have to go back and say, hey, like, you know, so there's times where like, you end up in those ruts and even someone who knows it, like I, I you know, I learned that obviously from hearing your story, but I knew it from Rick because he's the epitome of like, just shoot your shot yep. for everything in life, which like guys just doesn't get phased, which I often get used to get phased. Now I don't care as much, but like n- n- channeling those things and doing it for cast and doing it even for this podcast, like just DMing people and figuring it out. Um, Makes you realize that like, it's literally a numbers game. It's math. 100%. And people saying no, who gives a shit? Because, like, they're not going to remember you. And if it, like, all your goal is just to get to the end result. And if yeah. you get to the end result, then they'll probably remember you because I'm like, oh, that was the guy that, whatever. 100%. Um, but it's hard because there's days where you hit those roadblocks. And even though you know, mm-hmm. I just got to keep going, sometimes it gets hard and you're like, shit. Like, no, always it will be. Yeah. That's like the, the number one thing. I, I'm noticing in like my, my current like, cycle of, of things, I've been trying to get healthy. I see. I see this guy. Yeah, but you look like you lost. Like you look like you lost weight. So in the last like five, six we months, we've run into each other at the gym like three yeah, or four times. I, now, yeah, I've lost like thirty pounds. Oh, good for which you. Which is which is a lot of weight, it's and like lot. I hit like my I guess just my size. I have like just because I worked out in the past, like my shoulder structure and everything. I hid weight decently. Like I, I was two hundred twenty pounds, which I'm I'm not that tall. That's a lot of weight. That's I'm in the same boat as you. You get like you're, you're preaching to the choir here. Like so, I'm about the same. Right. So yeah. what I. I went back to that structure of it's just math so what do i have to do why don't i just go to the gym twice a day and i've only missed i don't know maybe three four days because we were traveling too intensely or too many too many flights but i've been to the gym every every single day for five and a half six months now and most days twice a day like 5 a.m and 8 p.m because i just have to find time to to make it work and then it's like okay the math is that if i just do this i'm gonna be burning more calories i'm taking in then all i have to do is take the next step which is let me just eat a little healthier it, everything is just math. Like, just figure it out. Like, there's anything you want to do. And I, and there's, you know how many mornings at 4.20 a.m. I wake up and I'm like, this is miserable. I do not mm-hmm. want to go to the gym right now. But then I just tell myself, the math is if you do this, you'll you'll see results. And there's a there's a great quote uh, by Simon Sinek. Do you know Simon? Yeah, yeah. So start he's, with he, why. Start with why. He's an yeah. author and I think. So he says it ta- specifically about the gym. And I he was relating it to life. But he says if every single day you go to the gym, and after you leave the gym, you look in the mirror. You will go home upset because you're not going to see any results. Every day you go to the gym, you just look yourself in the mirror and be like, that was a waste of time. But if you take a picture on the first day, you take a picture on the 90th day, you will see astronomical results. And I think that's what it was like. That's reaching out to people. That's working out. That's your business, whatever it may be. And I, I really took to that because it's like, you know, everyone knows that, right? You know for that. For sure, for sure. You know that take, if I did something for 90 days in a row, obviously I'm going to see results. But we don't want to know it because it's hard. And sometimes people don't want to do it. But you said something earlier yeah, they that, don't want to that do it, yeah. you hit the, the nail on the, the hammer on the nail. The nail on the head. The nail on the head. Hammer on the nail, same thing. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, you said that like you had those 100 people, 80 dropped off, but you only needed 20 yeah. to make a successful thing. So many people forget that. It's like you reach out to a good closer in any business. Like you're closing 20% of your deals. Like that's great. It's great. You're making, good, great. You're making a good living. Yeah. yeah. If you're closing 20% of your deals in any sales business, you're doing good. Yeah. You're doing great, probably actually, but people always forget. It's like, oh, I got, I got nine, I got nine no's and only one yes. It's like, yo, you're still doing fucking good. You got 100%. that one yes. How many yeses do you really need in life? Like, you don't need a million yeses a day. Like, I, I related because I just started doing this influencer stuff. We were talking about this off air, and anytime I want something now, or if I see something I like, I just email the brand or I DM them. Hundred percent. So many of them don't respond, and then a lot of them do. Yeah, hey, we'll put you on our list. Blah blah. Now, months later, I'm getting emails from these brands that reached out. Hey, I saw you reached out to us. By the way, what are your rates? I'm like, I would have did it for free three months ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Here are my rates. What's yeah. up? Like, 100%. Again, it, just because you don't get the yes right away or yeah. just because you got a couple no's, it doesn't mean it's, hey, it's not going to happen. The, the bigger thing that I've even seen off the back of that, which is that's 100% accurate, is that one may lead to 50. Yeah. And, and that I've seen that with my canvas art, like, especially as I've done more and more canvases outside of Toronto and people that I don't know. And they're not in the, like the circles that I, I usually roll in. I can reach out to 10 people. One will buy a canvas or one will say yes to accepting a canvas. And then that one person brings me 20 yeah. and that continuously happens. Cause and, and in the moment I'm upset. I'm just human nature. I was like, really? Like I really thought we were going to sell eight here. I only got one. I got Fuck. one. Yeah. This sucks. But that one person over a six-month span has brought in a ton of people. And I, it, that's a 
That's why we can't like you can't think of those minute things. You have to look at it in a bigger picture sometimes, and it's tough. Man, it, it, it is tough. like get, getting nose is never easy. Like no. even I'm George said this. I like I I shoot my shot. I don't care. I'm currently on George. I don't know if Becca did she? Yeah, tell you? I was standing next to her. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm gonna tell. I'll tell the story. I'm gonna put myself on blast here. So <laughs> I, I found this this British. Girl. I, I don't know why I love British women right now. Like I'm just I'm into the <laughs> the accents. One of my my close girlfriends has a she turns on a British accent. And she had her British friends here, and I, I just, I just love the British accent. So I'm like, you know what? My future wife's in Britain, in in England. And so I moved my hinge location there. I, I came back just because it was, <laughs> it was location. too tough out there. Like at one point, I was just, I was running out of likes by like, I haven't even left my bed, and I ran out of likes in the morning. <laughs> like, I can't be doing this. I'm gonna end up spending too much money, anyways. So I found this one British girl on um, on Instagram <laughs> or TikTok. I'm in love with her. I'm mean, like, just, I don't know her, but like, just. Yeah, her TikTok, her, her a bold vibe. statement to make without knowing who someone well, is. Well, yeah. you know what? Through TikTok, like, I think the right word is you're infatuated. Yeah, infatuated. Yes, or maybe yeah. love at first sight, but you never <laughs> infatuation. Know. Is probably the right <laughs> word. So you see her TikToks. I'm like, this girl. Okay, I got to get her attention. How do I get her attention? So I looked at mutual friends. Sammy has a mutual friend that knows or whatever. Trying to set it up. We'll see what happens with that. But I said, okay. Well, what she am lives I lives in London. She lives in London. I won't move there, but like maybe I maybe might. You, know. you, yeah, yeah, know. you got some points. You flew. Yeah. Fly yeah, I'll, I'll fly back. I'll fly over once a month. Yeah. Um, so I was like, "What can I do to stand out? What am I good at? What am I really, really good at?" Making bad TikToks. Ma okay, well, <laughs> you know, I'm not big in England yet. I need to. I need to switch over and get big in England. So she notices Sorry. me. Anyways, but I said, "What am I really good at? Things I can I can just separate from her. I'm consistent, and I'm very like I'm very consistent at the things I I want." Yeah. Like, you know, when I go to the gym, I'll go every day and I won't miss a fucking beat no matter how hungover I am. I will go. Mm -hmm. You know, anything I do in life, I put my mind to it. I can stay consistent. I think consistency is like one of the best qualities people can have. Like perseverance. It is the most, I think it's the most important. Most quality. important. Yeah. So what, what, what can I do? Okay. I'm consistent. Okay. Well, all right. I'm going to message girl every day for 50 fucking days. So I'm currently on day <laughs> four, I think. Three oh, or four. nice. But I'm, uh, I actually, can you see on TikTok? Can you see red? Uh, or well, it's on Instagram, but oh, yeah. So well, once she accepts it, I'll, I would see scene, but she hasn't accepted it. Okay. Yet, maybe. So I said, I'm going to message girl every single day for 50 fucking days. And I have the notification in my, in my phone. So I make sure I don't forget because again, like if it's in my phone, it's a notification. That's yeah, amazing. 1245 every day. I want to be consistent, but usually every morning I wake up and I remember to do it first thing. If he can do five and a half months of two a days, if I can do 75 days, no drinking, you can do, you can do 50 Easy. days. You can do a hundred. Are, are you doing 75? I, I, I keep did going. It. Yeah. You did it? Oh but yeah. I, I did it, you but did I, I waffled. Part. I'm actually starting it again. Like now, I'm on like basically. day 13 oh, right now. Are you doing it? I'm doing it, but I'm, and the only reason I'm saying this is because I, I'm doing everything. I have not drank. I'm, I'm doing, I'm, the diet's 100% clean. I'm drinking the water, all the fun stuff, two workouts. I don't see enough value in the outdoor workout, and I know it's mental. That's what got me. I, I believe that it's mental, and I'm, I'm not denying it, but because I'm still trying to like get my body to where it needs to be, walking in the cold, I, and I hurt. that's how I hurt my, tore my calf was running in the ice. I, I when did you tear your calf? Like about a year ago, I you was were doing those five a.m. runs. Exactly, I was. Okay. I ran. It was it was cold. It was ice. I and I, I think like and actually was, tore. It's bad, bad. Like I got MRI. Like it, I couldn't. Yeah, it, yeah. It yeah. hurt to walk. Understood. Um. So it was because of ice, and I I didn't see enough value in it, but I do see value in everything else. And I you know the reading and all the other stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. Seventy five hard. Um, seventy five hard for anyone that doesn't know is a program by Andy Fisella, who's a you know a big uh, big fitness guy and yeah, an yeah. entrepreneur. And there's different levels to what you have to do um, every single day for 75 days. So I end June 3rd, which I'm super excited for. Um, but until then, I'm not. I'm gonna follow everything else. Yeah, except so the outside work. There's also 75 soft. I just saw it online. Well, the other day. I don't know if that's real because what I saw a girl post it on TikTok. Thing. No, that's bullshit. I just it's, saw it the other day. Yeah. Somebody made it up to be like that's funny to, to just. Actually, sorry. Just, you just do a, a troll. Happy. Just a troll. Yeah. You can do a mix. I don't happy. think it's a troll. I think it's just like yeah. someone made it up to like because the 75 hard is hard. Yeah, but that's the point. Yeah, of course. So. I'm the same as you. The, the outdoor workout got me. But for the first month, so me and my girlfriend did it together. Nice. Um, the no drinking was started hard, but not because I missed getting drunk. I actually, I'm actually going back on it because I, I drank three drinks of the night. And I got hungover and I fucking hated it. Yeah, exactly. Um, that part I don't miss. But anyways, we started together and the first 35 days, we did like everything. The only thing we didn't do is we didn't count the water, but I know I drink a lot, so I'm like, I gotta yeah. be close to it. It's all mental too. Like, you know you did it. You yeah. know when you're cheating yourself. Exactly. Yeah. But the one that got me, after 35 days, I hit this wall. I lost like, I think, eight pounds in the first month. Nice. And then, by like, around like the 
month and a half, I was down to like maybe 10, 12, which a lot of it's water weight, but like came out fast. And then I started to hit a wall where I was like, I'm exhausted. Yep. I didn't eat any cheat meals. I hadn't had sugar. That's my, that's my kryptonite. Not like booze, not anything else. Like eating candy. Like yep. That's me too. It's the worst. 100%. Um, but after those days, I didn't crave it. Even now, like I don't crave it. Yep. I bought Smart Sweets today because I was like on sale. But I don't. Um, so that wasn't a benefit of it. But anyways, I stuck to it. But then, and even in the cold days, I did it. But then it started getting really hard because I exhausted. Yep. I was like, do I really want to go for this run? I enjoy running too. And I'm like, do yep. I want to go outside? It's blowing. It's minus 20. I was like, I'll stay in and do a second workout. So I started doing uh, two indoors. Yep. But then it got a little bit harder near the end. And I was like, you know, I was getting sore. My, I was on my feet so much because I stand at my desk at work. So I started skipping a couple. Um so, so I'm like, you, you know did what? It, but yeah, yeah, I, I it. did it. I read every day. I yeah. just re- read. Read anyways. It's, it comes yeah. easy to me. Um, no, I awesome. missed some of the workouts, and I, I there was a uh, what else did I miss? Yeah. So anyways, I I didn't feel. Man, by the end of it, I kind of plateaued, stopped losing weight. So I'm like, you know what? I kind of dogged it a bit, and I was like, I thought about it. And again, me and my girlfriend went to celebrate. We because she stuck to it as well. We went to uh, Gia, the vegan Italian place okay, on cool. Dundas. Pretty nice. We had. That's I think the I had, sister machine, uh, sister restaurant of. I think it's Julietta, uh, right? I, no. Oh. oh, something. Anyways, I thought so too. I can, thank you, Danielle. Cool. Um, and then uh, had some drinks, and I felt kind of crummy the next day. And I was like, "Wow, oh, this is kind of shit. Like, I don't feel great." Whatever. Didn't think anything of it. Then I went out for uh, went on a double day with a buddy of mine, and I had like three martinis, some wine. The next morning, I felt awful. So, yeah. Like awful. And I used to be, like before I could drink that, I'd be drunk, but a buzz. But like. I was like, I don't miss this. Like, yep. do not miss this feeling. I never felt better than when I was doing it. So, anyways, I think I'm going to get back on it. I'm just trying to figure out now. Oh, sorry. That was it. The diet. I did intermittent, intermittent fasting, which yep. there was a little bit of leniency with that. So, I want to get more serious with what I'm going to do. So, anyways. Amazing. Long story short, I think I'm going to get yeah, back no, into I, it. Yeah, no, I think it's super important. That goes back to the consistency and all that that type of fun stuff. So, I think it's it's really, really cool. Yeah. What are you going to do for birthday and, like, bachelor parties and stuff? I won't drink. Okay. Let's I have see. one. So I, I did do one this day. timing worked out. I have one wedding. That's a really good friend of mine at the end of this month that I'm in the wedding party for. And that's going to be a tricky one not to drink at. Um, but I, I preempted everyone that was like, guys, I just went to the bachelor party and we, we drank every day. So I'll be okay. Uh, yeah. I got a pass for the, uh, for the wedding, the but it is, too. but like the feeling crappy the next day is everything. Like when you don't feel good the next day and like, and yeah, you can power through it and it's tough. And obviously you have more willpower than most of yeah, us for sure. But I don't I would want say to. It's less willpower because I can't not drink. No, but the, no, yeah, I but know, like I work, you know, say like I, we, I want your body. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so when I have your body, I can say that. <laughs> yeah, but do, do you know what I mean? Like I it's, I it's, it's Rick and there's a ton the of us. Way. There's a ton of us that do the exact same amount of drinking you, and then they do nothing. Slobs all day the next day. Yeah, that's that. You could be that too. That's how I am often. That's how I am often. The average person is. Yeah, we are, and I noticed that with with drinking too. And then I also realized, like, what am I? What do I need this beer for? Like, I don't need this beer right now. And and there's there are situations. Cass and I talked about this as well. It's like, if I'm at a client's house and we're having a great night, and he opens up a nice bottle of wine, am I gonna say no? No, I'm gonna drink. Yeah, like I am. So like I know I have the potential to break. I know I have the potential to break this 75 hard. With that scenario, that's such a specific scenario. It's happened maybe two times in the last six years where, yeah, like, you feel like it can happen at any time. But it time. could happen at any time. I deliver that's a painting, they're like, hey, listen, I want to open this bottle with you to celebrate. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, you're not going to say no. say no. Oh, sorry, I'm on 75 hard. That's yeah. what gets me for my work. I go with clients a lot. Um, not with cast, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but uh, with my family business, like, it's one of the things. And, like, you feel bad. And then it also sometimes makes people uncomfortable. With my yeah. friends, they don't care. Yeah. Like, they're not going to say great, anything. My family doesn't I care. have a great story. I was installing a painting at it, this, this beautiful house in Forest Hill. And I get there, and we're putting it up. And he's like, oh, let me get you a drink. Like, And it was the first time I tried 75. This is about, like, six, seven months ago. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. I haven't had a drink in, like, six days. And I didn't finish my sentence to say, like, I'm on this program. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you had a problem. Oh. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, no, it's not It's not that. It's not that. I just, like, I, I'm doing this. I try to backtrack. It's called 75 Hard. He's like, what are you talking? I'm like, yeah. bro. That's- so I'm like, yeah, whatever. I have a problem, bro. That's like, I'm sorry. Excuse. That's your excuse. Bro. I was like, no, sorry. I'm on day seven. I'm on day seven. I'm on day seven. Yeah. No drinking. Seven it was days. Like, yeah, so it was so funny. Like, that's why I don't even tell people anymore. I'm like, I either say, I either know I'm going into drink or I'm just like, no, I'm okay tonight. <laughs> yeah. But you know, like, and the thing is too, is that t- I'm, I'm kind of in the same mindset of you this time as well. Cause like the, fr- doing it the first time felt really good. I felt I left something on the table this time to your point. Like, am I not going to drink yeah. at, Mar- at the, at the bachelor, bachelor party? Parties, we're going to, we're going to Belmont. Yeah. 
we're going to the Belmont Stakes, like horse race. I'm not oh, going to wow, drink there. Oh, so cool. Sure. Especially yeah. when everybody's drinking. Of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like those ones, okay, I'll bend it, but I want to stick to the principles of like, because when I did it, I don't like to keep shit in my head, so I put, like I have a, like a Google yep. Tasks. You don't have to check the app? them off. Yeah. No, there's an app? Oh my God. 75 hard app. Yeah. Bro, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. What? It's amazing. Oh, I had no it's idea. In the app, it gives you the calendar. You check off everything. You take the picture of yourself every day in the app. Oh, I it didn't literally know. gives you. You have notifications. So, like at at eight p.m., it's gonna ring my phone and be like, "Did you get your second workout in? Did you drink enough work?" I think. Wow, I did not. Just seventy five hard. Just app. Yeah, it's like a couple bucks. Okay, I haven't done all this. It's fantastic. Um, fantastic. Yeah, so I basically did it the manual way. I put it into like Google uh, things. Oh, wow. and I would check it off every day. Yes, yeah, so th- you're gonna love. Okay, yeah. I'll Dude, download that then. Because it's like honestly, Notes, that's things everything. you stick to. Like, even if you drink once in a while, like. It's it's extreme for the social no, lifestyle even not if to you, drink. Even if you drink once in a while, you just did ninety percent better than you would have. And that's the thing, right? Like everyone has time. Like, look, it's I always feel bad because I feel I feel it comes across a little bit like a little arrogantly where you're like, yeah, I I read a lot. Everyone should read, but it's true. Everyone should read a little bit. Read just anything. 100%. Read a like read a Time magazine article, whatever it is. But like, find time to read rather than just consuming everything from technology. But that plus like getting out, even if you're not gonna work out, it's like getting outside for a walk. Like all the it things that it, great. that it has. Yep. People are like, oh, it's so intense and that it's, you know, it's a social media fad. Okay, sure. But these aren't like not bad principles to live by. Exactly. They might be a bit extreme, no. but they're not going to hurt you if you do it. They're actually not even extreme, right? They're like not. if you actually, what are they, what are they saying to do? Go outside. <laughs> the 75 drinking might be uh, a little 75 bit. drinking and two workouts no. a day, like, and following a diet. So <laughs> to say those you, aren't extreme, like, come on, guys, say, give me a fucking break here. Come on, like, say, I'm, all, I'm all for it. If but. you listen to him, the actual guy, Andy, who created this, he Cassie's goes, like, yeah, I know his what second thing is a walk. Yeah. So he goes for a walk in the fresh air That's to get the sun do. on his skin. That is actually known to help uh, so many different things. He tells you to drink water. We should drink water. We, people, that's one thing. Tells you not to yeah. stick to any diet you want. So all I did was cut out all processed sugar, all candy, and all desserts. That's that was my diet. Okay. Okay. But it's so, a good one though. That yeah, is that, good. That is, and that's a, a fairly like normal. Because I would go like if I pump gas, I would get yeah. a pack of fuzzy peaches. Yeah, yeah. Like if I went to Tim's to Same. get a coffee, you I'd get that? two donuts. That's a thing. I, of course, I, I used oh, to. Oh, I go into pay. I grab like a bag of like like nibs or something, and I will eat them all at home when I get on the couch. Home, I'll eat dinner then at I'll home. Eat them. I get eaten by the time I get back to the car. See me, I eat. So I used to home. do. Yeah, I used oh, to do yeah, that yeah. all the time. But I was always on the road or doing this or getting to the studio, and I would always do that. Now I do not at all. That's like yeah. But for a while, I haven't done that. But like you know what I mean. Do you know what's really nice when you start like a new diet or something? You start like a, tr- a seventy-five hard thing. Cutting out that one thing that is just so bad for you that you love. Yeah. When you're able to cut it out, and you see that like. The results are dramatic and instant. Yeah. Like for me, anytime like Lent, I used to give up popcorn every year for Lent. And it was like the worst thing, but the best thing ever for me. Because it's, it was, I would have popcorn twice a week, max. But I'd have like five bowls and like buttery (laughs) seasoning and everything. And like you feel like shit after. And it's so bad for you because again, like five fucking bags with seasoning, salt and pop and butter and blah, blah. You cut that out. You're like, okay, well that wasn't that hard. Yeah. But it was so good for me. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. right now I'm trying to cut it out like this next like month and month and a half just because like my May June July August is it Lent? Long, When's Lent? It's over in two weeks. Oh, well, I, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I screwed up one day, but nice. But I've had popcorn once since. But again, it's one of those things when you find that one easy thing 100%. to give up. Like for you, when you're hungover, if you just cut out the junk food you eat when you're hungover, that's that's so that's the other thing. Too. Just don't be hungover. Is what yeah, I'm saying. So that's, <laughs> the, <laughs> that's the thing that I look at now, as, I, as I get older. It's like okay. I can try to be more disciplined when I'm hungover or I can not be hungover. And then if you work backwards, take things out, go to the root of anything. Yep. Like you identify what a, you know, I don't want to call it a problem. Like I don't go and drink belligerently, no, but, no, no. but, but like, you eliminate yeah, the source. It's a problem to you thing. in the moment, right? It's, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing too, is like, even through doing this, like Becca um, and I were like, you know, what's going to be our celebratory meal? We're like trying to plan ahead and like, yeah, getting kind of excited about it. But as it went on more and more, I'm like, you know, like, do I really need to celebrate this? Like doing it in and of itself is I'm like, I'm proud that I did it. 100%. So even when we finished, we're like, do we like, do we really want to, like, we want to McDonald's. We're like, do yeah. we really want to get McDonald's? Yeah. Mind you, we had it like a week after we were done, but I ordered like nuggets and fries I've, and medium fries. I've never done that in my life. Yeah. It's like Big Mac, junior chicken and, and whatever. And it's weird. Like I, I think the fact that it wasn't like, cause it calls like a mental challenge, right? It's not of more course. a physical one. Yeah. And it really does change how you look at things. Yep. Um, and maybe I just wasn't that disciplined before. I mean, I was always someone who was like, yeah, but like even you, if it, even I hit if it my helped, weight well, even if it helped a couple of percentage, it helps a lot. Exactly. Right. And you but, just feel better mentally. You just wake up easier. Like I, that's a big thing. Like when, if, when I wasn't losing weight, let's just say, like I wasn't looking better, 
mentally I was as strong as I've ever been when I started to go to the gym more consistently. Yeah. Because I just felt better. Like I knew I was doing something right. Where like every day when I, there were so many times you can ask Kaz, I, every time I'm like, I don't want to go to the gym today. I do not want to go to the gym today. Mm -hmm. But then I leave the gym, I text her away. I'm like so thankful I went to the gym. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, it's the right thing to do. Two things on that. Even a bad workout is still a good workout. 100%. Because as long as you make it there and actually just attempt to work out, it's still better than what you would have been doing at home. You would have mm -hmm. been on the couch because there's days where I don't want to go either. I'm like, you know, I'm going to go there and I'm going to just watch TikToks for a fucking hour while I'm on the stairs or while I'm on the treadmill. Yes. Better than being yes. on the couch. And it's like, I, or else if I didn't do that, I'd be on the couch just in bed like this. Yeah. My phone falling on my face every 10 minutes because my hands are so clammy. Like, <laughs> so so weird how clammy yeah. your hands <laughs> So instead, I'd, I'd rather just like, even when I edit TikToks, I go to the gym on Sunday sometimes for like two, three hours and I just walk. Like speed three, incline 10. Which is not hard. You sweat after like half hour, an hour. And I'll do all my editing. Yeah. For, for everything I recorded on Saturday, I'll record like 10, 15 TikToks. And I'll do all the editing or like put the words in or like pick yeah, the yeah, sounds. Yeah. I'll yeah. do everything Amazing. on the on Sunday. Amazing. Just because again, if I'm not, I'm going to be sitting on my couch. I know that you're getting fit and you're making money as an influencer now. Yeah. There it is. But uh, there was one other thing that you said. Damn it. Sure. Um, it was about going to the gym and just getting a little bit better every day. Yeah. It's that 1% rule. Compounds. If you, yeah. Yep. Yep. Everyone thinks like, okay, that just... By working out or you get slightly better. It's like, but yeah, every single day you're getting slightly better. That 1% is more than that 1% yesterday. 100%. It just keeps growing, keeps growing. Yeah. Like if you read 10 pages a day, I think it works out to, uh, it's like 36 books a year or something. That, I like, <coughs> the I reading saw, part, sorry, that's, that's what's it. Picture but you have it. a good point. Like I've always liked reading, but you always hit those waves where you're like, okay, yeah. leave the book on the side. I, I've read more books this year than probably like more... I want pace to like read more than I ever have just because I pick up for 10 and sometimes I only do 10 because yeah. I'm like, I'm in a rush. I want to yes. check it off. Agree. But there's days where I sit and I'm like, okay, like I'm in the good part. Now. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Like I, I just keep flying through it. And like, anyways, I, I think it's really good. I actually really happy I did it. It's funny. A lot of people and they're like, why are you not drinking? I'm like 75 hard. They're like, what? And I'm no, like, I thought nobody, I mean, you gotta be in certain things to know certain things. I thought things. just it was social like media. A, people knew like it. It's such a big thing now. We, Everybody yeah. knows it. A people, lot of people do, but them, I yeah. I could tell yeah. twenty people like family and friends would be like I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, really? but it's also like what you what you consume, right? Like if if you yeah. never consume the entrepreneur <clears throat> space, the fitness space, the health and wellness space on your social media, you will not see what seventy five hours. Yeah, that's is. true. So like it's just it's just what you consume. And here's what I want to say before the other part. Uh, even if you fail seventy five hard, you don't follow everything to the T, and let's say you only do two of the seven tasks that are seventy five hard. That's still a major fucking win. Like, I agree. People forget that just drinking four liters of water, whatever the liters of water yeah. a day, is great for you. Yeah. Reading 10 pages a day, even if that those are the only two things you did, you're still becoming mentally better. 100%. Maybe you didn't do two workouts a day. You didn't do the second workout a day outside. If you still went to the gym every single day for 75 days, that's a fucking massive win. Yep. Yep. Like people forget, oh, I didn't, it, I didn't do it completely. It's like, yo, you still fucking did majority of it. That's still, um, even if you complete one of those things for 75 days in a row, that's still a massive win. Absolutely. Totally agree. I, it's just people I, I know sometimes you're like oh I can't do all of them. okay we'll pick three of them and stick to those three maybe don't do all seven of them like okay you, you can't give up drinking for 75 days or you can't do two work a day fair enough man most people can't give up can't do both of those okay just do one workout a day for 75 days even if it's just a fucking walk yep especially now because the weather's getting nice yep it's nice everybody's though. got 45 minutes in a day to go for a walk and that leads me to an incredible point that people will always have messaged me. And I was one that made excuse too. We don't have time. So when you want anything in life, literally anything, you will make time for it. So when I finally chose, I was like, I want to get healthy. So now I got to look at my day. I'm like, I spend an, a, a large amount of my day with my son and wife. I spent a lot of time painting. So I got to figure this out. So they sleep till 637, right? That's the time my son wakes up. So I gotta I gotta be in the gym by five because if I want to be home for breakfast. Oh, and then they go. He goes to bed at seven thirty. Perfect. Then I'm at the gym at eight. Just find time. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to do, like it, everyone that says I don't have time to do something, is it's yeah. the silliest thing ever. Absolutely. And I think that's 100%. a that's that's a. I, how many? What time do we go to the gym? I I, I see you at the gym yeah. once a week now. A couple times a week, yeah. cross past the gym. You gotta, you gotta it's make at time. night. It's at night. We're yeah. going for a swim at ten p.m. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like because why? It's not because I want to go for a swim at ten p.m. It's because that's what time everything else ended. And I could fit in the forty-five minutes to an hour that I wanted to get in. Yeah. If you, you want do, something in you anything want something, you want anything. in life, you'll you'll make it you'll work. Make it just means you don't want it. One of the other things that sorry, do you have a point on that? I don't want to cut uh, you off because I'd be cutting you off a lot. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, it's fine. One thing people when they say they don't have time, it's the little things. Okay, maybe you take the bus to work every day. Okay, get off four stops early 
and walk the 45 minutes. The distance. Wake up 45 minutes earlier. Yeah, wake up 45. Yeah. Wake up for, or you know what? Man, am I hungry after work some days? Yeah. I have dinner at the office oh, literally four days a week, probably. And then I'll literally go straight to the gym after because I'm yeah. like, I know I need to do it. And yeah. right now I'm on like a kick like you where I'm trying to go twice a day and like whatever. My diet's mediocre at best. But again, I'm working out because I know my diet's not going to be perfect. I know I'm not going to be able to quit drinking. Okay. So what can I do that? I'll find time to go to the gym twice exactly. a day. Even if it is 9 p.m. and I'm going for a swim and I'm doing the worst swim ever. I'm swimming 500 meters in an hour, which is god awful. God awful. Doesn't matter. But doesn't matter. I'm yeah. still fucking there. Just being in the water, treading water, fucking twirling around a little 100%. bit. It's better than I'd be sitting on my ass at home eating popcorn. Yeah. I'm done. Oh, and we also sorry. know, sorry, just no, no, on the ahead, food, because you mentioned um, the food and eating. The one thing that we do know is that life events are going to come up. Bachelor parties, weddings, birthdays are going to come up. So if you're <laughs> if you're more consistent than not, like today, I had no reason to have anything bad. So all I've had today was a salad and we'll have something healthy tonight because I know uh, tomorrow night we have a, a, a nephew's birthday that, uh, you know, play thing. There's, there's probably not going to be great options to eat healthy oh, food there. Pizza. So we know. Cake. Yeah. So we know that there's going to be one or two events a week, one or two din- uh, meals per week, which are going to be a little bit out of our control, but we can control the controllables, which are every other lunch, mm-hmm. every other breakfast, every other dinner. We can control the controllables, and I think that's exactly to yeah, your point. Absolutely. I, I, I Even again, if you're going to go on these bachelor parties, okay, you know, we got. Th- let's say next month's got 30 days or 31 days. I don't even know how many. Um, you know, okay, maybe you, you want to work out every day, but you can't because you're going to be traveling. You're going to be okay. So pick a couple days earlier on the week and, and double down on them. Go 100%. in the morning, wake up early, make yourself uncomfortable, and do that extra work. Hundred percent. You have 21 meals, like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like what? 21 meals in a week and in a given week. If you have two of them that are bad, it's not going to crush yeah. you. I, I knew today I was going for lunch at Zoro's, and I did fucking bomb. My dad so, went to lunch there today. Dude. Really? Yeah, probably saw him. I definitely saw him. Yeah, yeah. The place wasn't busy. That's super funny. It's crazy. Zoro's. Yeah. Near the airport. Yes. Today. Yes. Wow, crazy. <laughs> he was in a blazer. <laughs> in a butt. He just went with his friend. Like what color was... blazer? Blue? Yeah. The bald head. B- white beard. <laughs> he literally went. It was a funny thing. My dad's a, a big uh, uh, Sabres crazy. fan. And his... Uh, sorry. Boston Red Sox fan. And his friend's a Blue Jays fan. And they had a bet of last season. And the dinner... And the, the bet was... Whoever loses the bet, whatever it is, takes it to the Zoros. And today they did it. So that's really funny that you were that's there. That's crazy. That's really <laughs> so weird. weird. Yeah, anyway. So I knew I was going there basically <laughs> so all week. Funny. So I said, I'm going to eat like shit. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, p- I'll push the lunch to have a later lunch. I'll, I'll intermittent fast till then. I'll only have another big meal later on today because I knew we were doing this at five. So if, like, if I have one other meal today, I'm good. Yeah. I know I'm going to walk tonight. I know I worked out today. Yeah. I'm good. 100%. So. I know I like no I just <coughs> great points I I don't have much to add like the control and the control is good no, I haven't heard that but that's a, that's a good way to look at it um, one of the things that like I've kind of taken from it is my problem has always been is um, which I didn't even realize a lot one of the big things when people say they don't have time but also one of the things is people like they con- there's you compromise with themselves right like in your head you're like yeah you know what I can skip this one I'll do the next one or I'll make it up down the road or whatever. And, and I've heard a lot. I actually started using TikTok a lot more recently. And my feed is basically workout stuff, healthy meals and like motivational shit. Yep. Um, motivational stuff just fires me up. But one, I always keep hearing this thing. It's like what, some from the people that have been historically successful or like whatever. And you see them in all over social media. And I can't remember who said it. Like, just don't compromise with yourself. Like, if you know, don't say, oh, I'll just do this or I'll just do that. Like, if yep. you want to do something, just, just do it. Don't make yes. an excuse for it. One of the things that I'm proud of myself for doing is I don't make excuses. If I do something, I'm not like, oh, I could have, I did it for this reason. It's you fucked up. Like, yes. just get back on and fix it. But one of the things I'm trying to do is like, you know, that self talk where you're like, mm, maybe I can go later. And then you do that. And it's like, okay, well, if I compromise that time, then, okay, the next time it's like, well, maybe I'll go even later. And like, or I'll, or I'll don't do this one workout today and I'll just do two tomorrow and I'll, and I'll eat one meal less. Like, you should never, will- like, if you pick, if you have something, don't deviate, don't compromise with yourself. You wouldn't compromise with somebody else. Like, Yep. You know, it's, yep. it's respect, show yourself the same respect that you would show somebody else. Yes. Um, if that makes sense. But yeah, no, that's one of the things that I'm trying to work at the most. Bang on. I have a good example of that. And I did it last week. So, lot, so I, some days I go to the gym at lunch if I know I got a late day at the office because I don't like having my main workout in the evening. Because again, we get tired. We get yeah. this. So it's either I'll, I'll plan an early morning workout or a lunchtime workout. That's why, again, I have two gym memberships. I go near the office sometimes, not every time to lifetime. So it was last week and I was like, I knew I had to stay at the work, at the office a little bit late, but I didn't have anything later, so I was going to do a double workout. So I usually I'll take my pre-workout around 11, so I go right at 12, workout 12 to 12.45, and back to the office by 1, quick little 15-minute lunch, and then back to work 1.15. That's usually my schedule. So 11 o'clock comes around, I, I start taking my pre-workout at 11.30. Someone called me to do something, and I was going to say, you know what, I'll do this after lunch, no worries, because I had time. 
I'm like, ah, oh, it's, it's only gonna take 15 minutes or maybe 30 minutes. So much worst case, I'm like five, 10 minutes later for my workout. Ended up taking me an hour, 1230 rolls around. And I'm like, oh, I should still go, but I'm kind of hungry. This is the time I kind of want to eat. My brother and my cousin were like, let's have lunch. So I ate. I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll make sure I have a good workout after work today. We stay at work till seven and you're dead tired after. I got to the gym at like 7.15. I'm like, this is the last place I want to fucking be. Yeah. And it's like, this is my, this was my, supposed this to be my point. secondary workout. I was supposed to just come here and just swim or just, you know, fucking twirl in the water for 30 minutes, 40 yeah. minutes. Instead, now I need to pretend that this is my good workout and I need to try and have a good workout. And I'm not. And I had a shit workout. Like, again, I still win. So it's not the end of the world. But I'm like, yeah. I fucking compromise. I, if I was going with someone else, no way I would have skipped that workout. Yeah. And that's, that's right. what you need to, you need to treat it like you're going with someone else because if me and you have a workout date and one of us, you're not going to bail on the other person because, oh, hey, hey, no, you're going to push that other thing that you have to do. You're going to push it off because, hey, I got somewhere to be at 12 o'clock. It's in yep. my calendar at 12 o'clock. Yeah. But so you I've feel been doing like it's that okay with to do it on now. yourself. Yeah. I've been actually been doing more classes, like maybe four a week. Because again, it's in my calendar. And you, you can't bail on it. Yeah. Because it's a class. So I literally said I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't doing enough core workout by myself. So I literally looked at the, our, we go to Lifetime Gym, they have an app. I looked at the schedule. I'm like, there is a core class at 11:30 a.m. on, on a Tuesday. Done. Yeah, I'm, it's booked in. It's like a, it's like a schedule mm-hmm. meet. Now I got did a you, core and you class. Can't yeah. on. And right? I so when I, that Suck. happened last week, super sore now. But on that note, too, do you guys have, have you heard of Legree? Yeah, no. It's on King Street right over here. Like, I've, yeah, no free shout outs. Fuck them. Okay, no, whatever. It's a, it's it's like basically <laughs> Pilates. It's on the thing okay. called Reformer. It's like okay. something that was invented in it, LA. It's basically Pilates. It's Pilates. Yeah. It is the hard. You want to do core? Really? Go, you just do a Pilates class. It is done. the hardest shit. You might be the only guy in there because I go to like yeah. my sister took me to Legree once. Like ninety percent of class, I'm the only guy. One time, there was Masai Ujiri was there. No way. Bizarre. I wasn't in the class that I was in, but like my sister went yeah, yeah, the morning yeah. before me. That's sick. Like it just it's it, crazy. It's, wow. like, women are tanks. First of all, like they just do this. And I'm sweating. Like want to like friggin. They're not physical them. tanks. You mean like like, like no? They're like no, just they, they're, their just, cores they're are so incredible. Yeah, 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 incredible. They're so strong. Wow. And like I, and they're know, like tiny little people. Like, yeah, their size. It's one of the hardest workouts. I'm just bringing up because oh, I'm t- sure that you guys, I don't know, lifetime probably. We, we have it. You got, it's a yeah. paid class. Yeah. So oh, me and my oh, mom okay. used to do it. Nice. It's hard. It is very hard, but you can get Ta- deals though. Talking about um, well, working out and and you mentioned pre workout. What are you? Do you take anything like protein? I take everything. Take everything. Everything. Honestly, everything. I think. I, I, I take, no, I don't take anything. So, so, so I take, I, I'm sorry, my 5 a.m. workouts. I, I apologize. I take pre. No, no, I take oh, pre workout. Which pre workout do you take? I take. Um, I was taking the one from GNC, the white ball. And now I take the flavored one that tastes like candy from the U.S. Uh, oh, like, do you understand how? What's the name of the brand? You, you take that, the one from Popeyes, yeah. and then the one that has a f- candy flavor, bro. Like that's literally <laughs> every every, every brand. Yeah. <laughs> like, there is, oh, it comes in a white tub too. Oh, is the tub only filled up a quarter? Like ghost? Yes. What a guess! What I, are the I'm taking no because you know I why? take Ghost Swedish Berry. I, I just got on Ghost. I got Ghost Swedish because their branding the is that, impeccable. Yeah. Now I'm a, I'm it a tastes brand, like Swedish like, fish. Yeah, Swedish Berry fish candies. That's all I take. Sorry, Ghost. Okay. But that's all I take. I don't take did, protein shakes. Funny, I, guess. I don't take like anything else. And I'm like, maybe I should. I don't know. Should I? I I'll do. I'll tell you what I do, and then feel free to do whatever you want. So I take uh, I take my pre workout. So first thing in the morning, if I'm going to the gym, I'll take. I have a fat burner called. Um, Oxy shred okay. that I don't see the results, but every fucking supplement store you go to the bathroom all the time. Uh, well, I do normally regardless okay. of supplements. I go three times a day, like almost every day. Um, anyways, it's a no, lot. but it's a something that's like a yeah. big side effect when I used to take. Yeah. Take well, cause super pump back in the day was nicknamed super dump. Right? <laughs> yeah. I remember super pump. Do remember? I don't remember. Super don't pump was nicknamed super dump I, because I it made you shit pump. instantly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One MR was the best pre-worker, but that, anyways, that so was cool. I, if I work out first in the morning, I take my oxy shred. Then I'll go, uh, I'll take my workout. I always take my BCAs. Mm-hmm. If I don't work out first in the morning, I take my BCAs or I take my um, chicken broth, depending on if I have any chicken broth. That's my first thing. Before my workout, I'll take my pre-workout, which is, um, I don't know. I can't remember which one I'm taking right now. It's not good. It's like pretty shit, but I bought it, so I got to finish it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after workout, depends. If I'm not eating a meal directly after my workout, I'll take uh, protein, which is, I don't, can't remember which one I'm taking right now, but it's a 32 grams per nice. serving. And it's whatever. It's in my car. I'll show you after. Yeah. Uh, and then I take my, I have a test booster, which is called Magnum Thrust, maybe. Okay. I don't know. It's a you like test? I've never taken test booster. To be honest, like, like I used to love Animal Stack back in the day. Yes. Like, I remember being like 21, taking that and be like, I got jacked in 21 days and it was like the coolest thing ever. Yeah. And I kept taking it like every six months. And I, I, I'm all about supplements. I believe in supplements. I think they're great. Just, I feel like your body just eventually stops. Like, it, it doesn't do the same effects. Gotcha. 
And then also, I do think there is like a placebo effect in any supplement. For if sure. You think it's so working out harder because you know you're on exactly, test. Yeah. Right. So I uh, so I take this one called Magnum Thrust, I think, from like Popeyes or GNC. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Does it work? No. The biggest thing on any and any fitness thing is diet. There's no. Yeah. You can die. Like my brother doesn't work out. He lost, so before his wedding, he ended up losing like 30 pounds between dieting nice. and at 45. And he looked he looks really good. He's not like Jack, but like he's like a yeah, fit looking like skinny dude. Yeah. And he stopped working out because his knee or his ankle or something. He has this app called um Noom. 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 Mm-hmm. Whatever. So it's kind of like my fitness pal, right? Yep. But just apparently better. And he tracks everything he eats. Yeah. And the guy's still losing weight. Where he's like, he has to eat at the end of the day just to hit the calories so he doesn't lose more weight. Wow. Well, his awesome. diet's Honestly, fucking impeccable right now. It's great. And he's killing it. And so anybody that's no supplement will be better than a proper diet. But again, you know, like we're young dudes. It's it's tough to have yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah. an amazing diet, especially when you're going to a fucking the nephew's birthday and there's pizza. It's tough yeah. not to eat it. Yeah. And my problem is like I, I see food, I eat it. That's it. Like yeah. if I don't buy bad food, I don't eat hundred percent. But there's no bad food in our that was a big change that we made. We just don't have any bad food. In our house. Yeah. And I was doing like, so I just finished Tony Robbins' new book called uh, Life Force. Okay. So it's all about uh, longevity in your life and eat what the foods we eat and what we intake into our body and how it can help us for for future thing. And so like, a big thing was like on, um, what's the bread? Yeah. Enriched, enriched wheat, how bad it is for, for our bodies and all these like different things that are like things that historically Wait, we just Enriched up- wheat is bad for you? There's like a these big studies as to like what okay. it does to your you protein levels and all. There's a, a, this, like it is like when you just like I mean uh, the simple rule of thumb like my big takeaway from the book like if it has more than six things in the ingredients that you can't read like you don't understand what you they are it's it. probably you shouldn't eat I've it. I've heard yeah. that too. And so like we, told us that, we, we we try to like in like in, in the house right now it's all like raw organic natural whatever we can do but then if i go to my parents house like it's just full of candies and i see it i want it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but like when you actually start like that book really opened my eyes when you start just like grabbing the ingredients to just things that you eat every day or like simple things or like a bar that you thought was healthy and there's like 15 ingredients that are all like type of different forms of chloride and all and this, all this like crazy 13 stuff letter words. it's like what is going on why am yeah, i ingesting yeah, yeah. this like this is this is just crazy so that's a that's a that's a big thing but like you mentioned like what you see, uh, like if I see it, I'm going to eat it. I'm the exact same way. So you just can't see it. <laughs> Another good rule of thumb, too, is just remember that it's more about when you're trying to get fit and whatever. Arnold Schwarzenegger, like Lou Ferrigno, all these major bodybuilders back in the day, mm-hmm. they didn't do crazy exercises. They did the basics. You know, they ran, they did their cardio, they lifted heavy weights. They, yeah. Their diets were like chicken, salad, yep. Brussels sprouts, broccoli, yeah. rice, the basic stuff. They yeah. weren't taking anything crazy. Yeah, some of them, you know, hit the no, sauce you, later yeah, on. Yeah, but it's fun, yeah. A lot of them did the basics. Yeah. The basics works. I see some people now doing these crazy workouts, these crazy this. It's like, yo, you do you. I just yeah. again, if Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was like the peak physique for like five years in the eighties, yeah. If he didn't do it, like, do we need to do it? Like, yeah. Yeah, and also we don't need to be Arnold. We just need to be healthy. Yeah, we just want to live longer. I want to be Arnold. <laughs> one of the things that that you bring up too about like this stuff about health and uh, longevity and all that—that's one of the things that I've actually like really taken an interest in lately. Um, is just doing things like you know what is what is the right way, and everyone is different. Everyone's body type is different, but it's it's very hard to know. Like at least for me, I'm not skeptical. I'm not some like I, I don't profess to be an expert in anything really. Yeah, even though I'm very opinionated in everything. Um. Like, I'll watch videos, and that's one of the things, honestly, that I actually like from TikTok is, like, you can follow different health experts and all that stuff. But then I'll see one guy who's talking about eat meat and eat fruits. That's it. And then, and then one guy thing. who's, like, you know, naturally eat, like, whole foods. Same thing you're saying. My dad's always said, just eat things. Like, you get, like, eat whole foods, and you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, but it's so interesting because, you know, I'm trying to get, like, you know, get back on this, like, you know, pick a diet, if you will, for the Sunday half heart, or just stick to something. I like, got something what, for you. What should I stick to? Because then I'm, like, you know, I want to cut out gluten even though i'm not gluten intolerant or dairy or lactose intolerant i'm like you know i probably shouldn't eat breads and pastas yep. like i probably could eat rice and like sweet potatoes so i i'm eliminating that but then i'm like you know these people talk about like some people say eat, eat fish and the mediterranean diet's like fish and some meats then you see this guy like carnivore md and sorry to call him out but like he's like eat meat and, and like liver you think he's listening he, to this oh, whatever <laughs> but sorry for calling like, him out <laughs> i don't know but i'm like i'm like he just he preaches this thing and i'm like when people get preachy i'm like is this yeah Anyways, I think you know what so I'm getting. So there's, a, this, there's 
in the book, and I'm going to shout out one of Tony Sorry. Robbins' companies. Um, there's a company we just got. I just got it in the mail, so I'm doing it tomorrow. It's called Viome. V-I-O-M-E. Okay. And Another what it is. shout out, boys. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Tony <laughs> Robbins, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I don't think he's listening <laughs> to you. Know, he's he's that, he might be. He might be. You never know. So, and what it is, is it's a, a blood test, uh, urine, and a, a stool sample that you send into the lab. And it's like, I think three, 400 bucks, whatever it was. And they do a proper full breakdown of any, and it's, a, it's on an app. It's like super modern. You look into it, you'll like love it. It's super tech. And it'll show you the level percentage of intolerance that your specific body has to any food you can ever think of. So you literally like, I think that I'm allergic to onions. I get a reaction when I eat onions. Interesting. This test will tell me that. And I, I've been saying it for a while now, like the gluten and carbs. Like if I had a lot of gluten, like I just feel, I feel bad. I guess, ugh. Yeah, but yeah. am I actually intolerant? I don't know. I still eat gluten. Like I don't really care, but maybe it actually is something that I should stay away from. Yeah. So this is going to do a test. And like, I was reading like a, a ton of reviews and a bunch of videos and like people were like, you know, I love tomatoes. I'd always eat tomatoes in my salad and stuff, but it actually was hurting me. And I didn't know that was the reason it was hurting me because really? there's different fruits and vegetables and, and processed stuff that we eat. We don't actually know it's hurting us. So like a test like this, and there, I'm sure there's other competitors to it, but Viome is the one that I'm going to use tomorrow. Uh, literally, I just got it in. V-I-O-M-E. M-E. I'll check um, it out. Yeah, That's I'm literally going to do it tomorrow. And, and then in two weeks, you send in all your samples. They give you everything. Send it all in. In two weeks, uh, it comes back to you. So, How, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, do you think it's like really accurate? Is that what the reviews say? So I, I obviously I saw some that were like, I don't know how accurate this is. And then a ton that were like, it was really smart to cut these yeah. things out of our diet. That's and it was really cool. So I, it's one of those things where I don't think it can hurt. Oh, Exa- yeah. Right. It's going to tell me something that I, I potentially know already, which is cool. Um, you know, well, we took the test or, or it may tell me like, Hey, cut out red peppers out of your diet, and that's really reacting with your gut. Yeah, and like that's why I'm I'm feeling bloated. That's why I'm feeling whatever. Sometimes I'll eat healthy all day, and I'll feel sick at the end of the night. Like, why is my stomach hurt right now? I didn't know bloating was like this big of a it, deal. Bloating's a it thing. Like, gut health, bad. It got me. Gut bad health right is a real thing. It's because yeah. everything that's put I into had our no stuff. No idea. It got me really bad when I actually right before seventy five hard. Like, I ballooned up to the biggest weight I was I ever have been. I think I was like two twenty three. Yeah, around that. But I felt for the last few months of last year, I was feeling so bloated. Everything I ate, I was like, "What yeah. is wrong with me? Like, why? I never used to feel that way." What do you mean? I went to bloated, blood. Though? I went to I blood tests. I, I got blood tests. Felt for like it. it was like I couldn't like yeah. hold it in. Like it was exactly. like pushing out. Yeah. Exactly. And I felt like I would like honestly, I like I would. You feel you know, sick to your been, stomach. Yeah. I literally got blood tests for it. Like went to the hospital because I was like, something's wrong with my stomach. Yeah. Oh, that bad? Yeah. It, nothing was. Yeah, yeah. Like medically, nothing was. Like my blood levels, everything's fine. Did you find tests? But like it was just like I was always I would eat I wouldn't eat anything bad or if I had one like if I had a chip like a singular chip I would feel sick. I'm like Hah. so that's just interesting because I would eat some stuff and I was like why do I feel this way? Sometimes I just I would have coffee in the day and I'd be like yeah. what the what is wrong with me? Yeah. When I started seven hard I went away like intermittent fasting yeah. and all that I was like I I have felt thinking once or twice since then. Hundred percent. Yesterday night coincidentally was one of them and I like you What'd know. What you eat? An entire large pizza last night. Well, I definitely deviated from my diet. Like from where? From Pizza Nova. I was I was out I fasted well, all day, but I was at my. I was see, expecting something see, fun. See, hold on. Here goes back to the point of like me saying I didn't want I don't want to compromise myself because I started thinking about this like recently. Yesterday I was sitting in the chair for my tattoo. I thought it was gonna be six hours, and I was gonna fast the whole time, go home, and have dinner at like six o'clock, and then it like it I, got home, I got home at eight thirty, and yeah. um, I was supposed to pick my girlfriend up from work, and then she had the Uber home, and she's like, well, like you know, like I'm not really feeling like cooking. I'm like, yeah, me neither. Like I'm not gonna cook at eight thirty after been sitting all day. Yeah. So what do you feel like? And they were like, "Why do we, like we haven't had pizza in a long time?" I was like, "Perfect! Like I, I fasted all day. How bad can it be?" But you see, fasted all day, and then all of that is a calorie deficit. Felt great, and I actually got home. I was like, "Wow, we shouldn't have ordered this pizza, but it's already in the way. I'll eat it." Eight week. I mean, I probably ate eighty percent of it. Yeah. And, wait, but also had chicken bites. Also had wedges, and like, <laughs> and I'm sure morning, you feel good after it. <laughs> I, I, I was eating that. I was like, "Oh, this is really nice." But then I just kept eating, kept yeah. eating, and then this morning I woke up, felt like I got hit by a bus. Yeah, I woke up three times that night. Your in the face sleep. is swollen. Everything. Everything. Yeah. And Everything. that's another thing you, you mentioned. Your brother doing the uh, tracking calories. So when I start, I use another app. I don't know, call Fit It something. Whatever. My fitness, it is. My fitness pal. That's a big. No, one. it's a. I, oh no. Lose it. It's called Lose okay. It. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's very very clean and simple, and I I start tracking everything. So. Uh, just like two weeks ago, we we're gonna go to after baseball, going to sushi with AJ, and I will usually just eat sashimi, but I'll have a couple of little things. And I'm like, how bad could it actually be? It's like 220 calories per piece. I would have like 20 pieces and 30 pieces and say, I'm like, I just had 2,000 calories out of nowhere for no reason at all, mm-hmm. just with the sushi. So when you actually track things, you're like, 
oh damn, this actually sucks. Like but shrimp yeah. tempura. Yeah, no, no. Oh. <laughs> is it bad calories? I don't even oh, know. They're terrible. Probably, yeah. I have and no I, idea. I, I, order like, but... I order 20 of them. Yeah, sit down. Can't before be I, good. Literally, the first thing I do when I sit down and all you can eat sushi is like shrimp tempura. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I crush it. enter, bring those while we decide what we want. Yeah. That's right. But it's true though. Like, But when you actually start tracking, you're like, oh my God, do I really eat this? Like, I shouldn't eat this. Yeah. That's my. That's what my brother did. So we got. So I've got this deal with WeCook right now. Where they send us a whole bunch of free food, right? So I share with my brother and my little cousin. They give us these little energy balls. And, like, they're great. Like the ones from Freshy, like yeah, little yeah, peanut yeah, butter exactly. ones? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, they yeah. Have pink, actually, they're fucking bomb. It's pink lemonade, chocolate hazelnut, and pink cookie lemonade. dough. That's interesting. Bomb. I'm, really? I'm, I'll, I'll, An interesting flavor for something that's, like, savor, uh, like yeah. something that's, like, a... Like a doughy Yeah, because yeah. you picture, like, candy. Yeah. Pink lemonade, you picture yeah, candy. Yeah, yeah, interesting. I'll, I'll bring some... I'll bring some because I have one more order of them coming in. I'll bring okay. them next week for you. Thank you. They're really bomb. The problem is they're 335 calories. Yes. That's why I noticed with the freshy ones. Like, so I used to always it. get them. It's an energy ball, right? It's 400 calories for two yeah. of them. It's an energy ball, so calories are energy. I understand that, but fuck. But like, wow. What we do is we normally split them up. It's like two each. It's like 300 calories or something. Yeah. Uh, for two or 300 calories? Let me find out. It's, it's, so my girlfriend actually right makes them. She makes amazing ones that taste like, like chocolate fudge, but they're like yeah. just basic stuff. No sugar, like yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. like nuts and cocoa powder or whatever but still that adds up you you go, we we've looked at so many recipes like that and then you back back out the calories on them you're like wow that was still like still we made super healthy protein pancakes like the healthiest ingredients you can it was still like 160 per thing i had three of them yeah, yeah i don't yeah. need a 600 calorie breakfast yeah that's like, true that's a good point it, it does when you track it does add up a lot yeah. like you yeah. you notice a lot that's more what they look like by the way oh they look good um i had something else i wanted to and I can't remember. Sorry, it's 150 per ball. So 300, okay, 300 for two. two. Yeah, 300 for two. Yeah, that's the same as freshy ones. Yeah. No, it's a uh, yeah. No, it adds up, but, but but it goes to everything. Tracking helps. All these little things help, mm -hmm. right? If you if you have a goal that you actually want to achieve, you have to do all these little things. Yeah, you'll find a way. So it's the little things, right? Yeah. Like, again, you could go from doing nothing to doing all these little things. And again, if you don't work out and you're not a healthy person, just literally drink water. Get sleep. Cut out some things in your diet, whether it's sugar, whether it's fast yeah. food, fried food, whatever it is. Cut out a couple of certain things and just move for 45 minutes a day. I promise if you do that for 90 days, you'll get fit. Yeah. Literally, I'm not even talking about like you'll lose weight. You'll get fit. Yeah. It, it's all it takes. And our body it's processes things. things differently too. Like I used to justify, this is a crazy thing to say, but I would look at those freshy balls or like those type of balls, 300 calories. I'd be like, yeah, but a pack of uh, Sour Patch Kids is 220, so I might as well just have this. It's completely, completely. different, of mm -hmm. course, right? Obviously, I'm just being silly yeah. to myself when, in those times. But that is how like I, used to, I used to yourself, rationalize yeah. it that way. It was like, I'm ingesting these calories. I'm like, no, it's actually junk process. First, this is obviously all natural stuff. It just happens yeah. to have a lot of calories. Absolutely. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. walking, COVID got me into walking. I used to hate walking. Used to it's like walk. getting from A to B is so in the slowest possible way. Yeah. Like, just hated it. Yeah. It's like, if, if I'm using it for transportation, I might as well bike yeah. or I might as well drive. But now it's like, I got into walking during COVID because again, there was nothing else to do. I was living at my parents' house going for walks. Now I'm absolutely addicted to it. Yep. And you don't realize a good 45 minute walk to an hour walk still burns like five, 600 calories. For sure. And again, if you and do it later at clarity, night, you, yeah. you can listen to podcasts, listen to music, you can do whatever you want. You can so that's what, now my hangout times, usually after podcasts, if Danielle doesn't come for a walk with me, I'll literally just like put on my close friends who wants to go for a walk downtown. Yeah. Or like I'll message so my girlfriends that live in the area and love it. Me and yeah. Danielle are going for a walk tonight. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's honestly the best thing. Just move for 45 minutes a day. 100%. People forget how good that is for you and your body, for your mental clarity, for anything and everything. Couldn't agree more. But let's switch over. We're going to start talking about art again. I feel like it's a good point. We're probably an hour in. We haven't even mentioned art. <laughs> what are we at, Danielle? I do that sometimes. An hour 10, eh? Okay, maybe we should talk a little bit of art. The, though, again, the best part is we always say this. Like, we had a whole bunch of music people on. And, like, we had, like, Juno Award winners. And we haven't talked any music. Music, yeah. Like, how do you, go, how do you have a musician on a Well, because we always talk about it. I talk about yeah, it every day. Friends, so, it's like, all, for yeah. those who don't know, like, we didn't know Richardi before he came on uh, the first time. He designed the studio for those who are new to the podcast. Yeah. He designed this whole wall. And we didn't know each other before, but now we've actually become like pretty yeah. good friends. Like we run into each other all the time. We like yeah. stay in touch. I know my mom messages me about your like stuff. <laughs> like, you see what Richardi did the other day? I was your like, yeah, awesome. I saw. Your you see awesome. AJ? You see him hit that ball? I was like, yeah, <laughs> mom, I fucking saw it. It's awesome. She's awesome. But uh, switching over to art, you said yeah. you got a new big. Uh, you got an email earlier. We, so you yeah, got a new show we have a up. you know um, new installation. Arts, sorry. art's been fun. You know, I you know, I think I we mentioned this last time, but I've been extremely grateful to be able to to paint and have galleries and and COVID 
it closed our galleries um and probably for the for the better like we we didn't real i didn't realize how much i was spending time in my in my galleries and having just to like to be there instead of being out there right and it's, it's very different Ooh, um, i like that how much i was there instead of yeah, being out there being out there yeah, yeah so it was a, you know it was a really I opened it for me and it, it allowed us as a family cast and AJ and I to like travel a ton. We, we, you know, we were away the last eight months. We were probably away more than we were at home. And that is half because of work and half because we tacked on family time on the back of work, which was awesome. Why wouldn't you? So, so it, with art, it, it's been awesome. We have a bunch of projects in the work. So we, we where you're mentioning is just as we, uh, we walked into the podcast, I got an email that, a uh, a project that Antigua got confirmed. So we'll be there for a few weeks, probably two, three weeks at the end of this month, which would be awesome and exciting. It's like a, big side of a building which will be fun wow. um and then we have a bunch of other projects we're working on it's um we have a, a line coming out a jewelry line coming out that we've been working on for like the last five six months it's like one of the biggest projects that i've ever done um so i'm finally being able to translate my artwork into something that's a little bit different physical and and have a creation my, my partners i'm super grateful like top in the world and all that stuff will release uh soon so i i'm very excited about that. I think you showed me some of those when I was at your studio last time. You're not supposed to tell anybody. So no, no, I'm joking. Oh, okay. My <laughs> no, yeah, I'm, joking. My <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no, like literally That's no one's seen anything. Do. No, it, it's exciting because the the scale that we're trying to execute this at and the scale that we've been developing for and creating the framework for um, is like one of the biggest things I've ever done. And, and, and because of that, I just, I didn't want outside distraction truly. Like I didn't want to start putting it out there. And, and I have, have partners that are, very big in the space and are incredible humans and I've been, you know, grateful for. So I'm, we're, we're rolling it out properly and I'm excited. So that's, that's one big project that I've been doing. And then the second thing is just been trying to develop bigger collections of artwork. So to go back to math, um, I, I really believe it's a funny thing, but like anything, Sorry, were you good at math growing up? It's horrible. At okay. math. <laughs> really bad. Uh, I graduated with a finance degree, but I suck at math. Like yeah. I'm really not good. Genuinely, genuinely. That's fair. I appreciate the honesty. Yeah, yeah, genuinely. Like, a AJ's not going to be taught math by my wife or I. He's going to have to go to school for math because we're not great in math. Um, <laughs> but to go back to math, I, I just realized everything's a numbers game. And and I realized, like, clients would reach out to me like, oh, I want to, I don't want a custom painting. I want something in your inventory. Like, you know, especially as prices start to escalate and, you know, people are making bigger, quote unquote, investments into the artwork. They don't want to have the, the burden on them to think of it. They want, like, something that I created. And that was always a weird thing for me. And that's, that's happened over the last six months where I was like, oh, can I see your inventory? I'm like, I have six pieces, 10 pieces for them to pick from. And then I started to look at like very big artists in the industry, like Damien Hirst and Jeff Koons of the world and all these like very, very big historic artists that have done, like they're still current artists, but like they've been around for 20, 30 years and they sell paintings in the 250000 to $500,000 range for a singular piece. And you go on what's available three four thousand pieces are available and they're creating ten thousand pieces every two years and like it's just the numbers are outstanding they're like it's a numbers game they don't need to sell that many anymore right like they but right, you gotta sell us 20 percent of those you, right? oh, you, gotta, you gotta sell two percent of those and you'll be okay <laughs> so for me i i going back to math i was like wait i'm not giving myself a chance here like if, if a client wants a painting and i'm only showing them six or ten how are they going to find the one that they love and they want to live with for the rest of their lives? So I've been really, really, really focused on that. In the last like four or five months now, I've been developing out a series of about 70 pieces, which is the biggest collection, single, all original collection I've ever done. Are they um, all vary in sizes? But mostly five foot by four foot. So I think like the same oh, size that big. I work. Yeah, all big, big pieces. Um, like oh. probably what, the size of this, the, the height of one of these hearts. Um, wow, this is four, but like a little, a little bigger than that. And I've been developing out a full, full, full collection to like sort of like to give to the world because I, I haven't done that in a really long time. So that's, that's where I've been with art. It's just been a huge in creation, huge in trying to get out in terms of, you know, get out there and see new parts of the world and do different things where I can like experience things and have inspiration. And then these installations and stuff have been awesome. So I've been still doing big collaborations, big murals and all that type of fun stuff. And then on top of all that is the, uh, the jewelry band, which will be out and I'll have all when I, I'll come on for the prop podcast properly with our co-founder and we'll Amazing. we'll talk all about that because that'll be super exciting i love that yeah that's awesome and i wanted to ask in terms of like you you referenced um coons and yeah jeff coons and, and damien hurst damien hurst 
When you say they have that many pieces, like 3,000, are they like live on their website anytime you can just go and so see So they're it? they're live on the gallery's website. So okay. they're they're part of a gallery network of hundreds of So I'm represented by myself. I don't have a gallery that represents me. But when you get into scale like that, you need galleries to go out there and sell your stuff okay. for you. So these guys also don't create their own stuff. At the points that they're at, they have a team of 30. Jeff Koons has 70 employees under him just painting all day and creating things for him. His vision. But that, wow. Wow. That's a thing in art. It, it really, especially coming from the outside art, you would not believe that that happens. But it historically has happened. Michelangelo to Da Vinci, they didn't create all of their own paintings. They had teams of people that helped them wow. execute on their vision. Really? Historically, it happened. So you could buy a, like a Michelangelo painting. Yep. And it's not actually painted by him. We, he just, you like, maybe necessarily know. That he signed off. There was, just a, there was just a recent Rembrandt that sold uh, for like $300 million at auction. And they had no proof that it was actually him. It could have been one of his underlings, like one of his associates. Um, wow. So I'd be royally cheesed. Yeah, it happens. It if happens. I spent three hundred million and I didn't get an original, it happens. I, w- I want to ask one more question. I on this point, if you're being cheesed, you hear about the guy that bought Tom Brady's last touchdown pass? I heard about that. So one of, one of our good friends, one time. of our good friends, Logan, who you met, his his brother, uh, one of his brother's good friends from work, was the guy who sold it. Who was at the game? I was at that game too. It was super cool. Like when the, the last touchdown, he threw it into the, in the crowd. He caught the ball. So they actually, so the story in the public's a little different. It actually sold to an auction house. Okay. And then there, the one guy who had committed to buying it from the auction house is who's in the media now. Oh, and they're okay. still going through it all. So the media is a little bit funny. It is a crazy story gotcha, that he gotcha. literally the, the Friday he buys it, Monday he comes back. I'm coming, I'm out of retirement. That's, that's I sucks. stopped that deal. So, yeah, payment so the only me. reason that it's on hold right now, the deal from, from uh, my friend's brother, is that it's still the last playoff ball that he threw? Because who says he's gonna make the playoffs this year? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, still, that's a that's a big difference between huge last, huge difference, huge difference. Last, last game ever, yeah. last playoff touchdown. Yeah, like, yeah. Wow, um, that's funny. The other the, the point I wanted to jump back to was, um, so to your point about being math and, and getting all that stuff out there, do you think as well, like by not having that kind of volume out there as well, even though let's say you know maybe someone's not going to go buy a hundred thousand dollar piece at a click of a button. They're going to want to talk to you, whatever, mm-hmm. but naturally by having more out there, you just increase awareness, increase exposure and all that yeah. sort of thing. So do you think that like, is your mentality now? Okay. Like I need to do this because it'll also help me for these reasons. It, it'll allow me to get more, I don't know, more eyes on the stuff that I do kind of, it's thing. just eyes. Yeah. It's eyeballs. You know, I always thought of that, that, that concept of, Oh, scarcity and like, scarcity in itself is fake like diamonds and gold like there's an infinite amount of this these type of things but the we've the world and society has created the scarcity value and artists do that historically and i thought that was the right the right move and i i'm not saying it's the wrong move by only having seven paintings available that makes it more rare that makes it people want more Mm -hmm. but the actual truth is that when people are making decisions like this at, at, at scale and at dollar scale and in for investments they want option. They want choice. They want to see a breadth of work. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned is like I needed, I need to create more. And the more I create, the more beauty I create, the more uh, more pieces. And my wife will tell you like I, there's a ton of pieces that I hate. And that's why this collection is taking so long because I never wanted to rush it. But there's going to be a ton that I really, really, really love. And then I would not have got to if I didn't try for the 61st and 62nd painting. If I stopped at 15, 16, 17 and didn't get to 60, these 60 paint, like the paintings from 60 to 70 look different than paintings 10 to 20 in for the better. And I think that's, that's how we continue to develop. Last time I was at a studio, I see this painting. It's like all black, but you could see that there was something underneath. I was like, is that supposed to be? Something? Yeah. I didn't like it anymore. So I just, I'm, I'm starting over. Again. I was like, yeah. Bro, Happens what? a lot. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I just didn't like it. I'm just restarting it. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Cool. <laughs> I've done that with hundreds. I would have taken of, it. Like, I've done that with hundreds of paintings. Like ah, it's I great. Not so like because like at the end of everything, when a, when I say a painting's done, like when I want to finally put my signature on it, like I absolutely have to love it. Yeah, of course. And it, honestly, it's your probably twenty percent of the paintings that I do. Like I, I love. Like I, I the eighty percent. Here's a big bucket of white paint. Start again. Let's just wow. go from scratch. So let's or I'll take make... elements of it, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll white out half of it. I really liked how I did these flowers here, this heart or this this quote. So I'll leave that and I'll, I'll erase everything else and do start again. But again, it goes back to numbers. You create 100 paintings a year. Let's say let's say 100, I don't know, let's say 100 a year just for round numbers. Yeah. You really love 20 of them, yep. right? Out of those 20, you know you sell 50% of your paintings within the first six months. Okay, so you're only selling 10 paintings a year. Okay, you want to sell more than 10 paintings. Okay, you need to triple or quadruple the amount of paintings you put out a year. Exactly. 
It's just a numbers game, right? It, and that goes to reaching out to people. I, let's say I want, for simple numbers, I want 10 clients a year, right? Yep. And I have to reach out to 100 to get 10. But okay, now I want 20. Like you just 200. said. 200. Or yeah. 400. Yeah, whatever whatever it is. Yep. And, and that, that's why we can always, we just talked about the numbers being in health, in, in clients, in execution of in pieces. dating, 50 in days in dating, a row, I'm going to do this. In dating. If she's listening one day, maybe. <laughs> so, it, Numbers. It's a numbers game. That's it. This you know how you're seeing success on TikTok. Sorry, I didn't go, mean no, to, go ahead, go ahead. You're seeing success on TikTok through extreme consistency. Because every time I open up TikTok, I have I'm getting this single gotcha. guy coming to me. I'm I like, it, I'm, like bro, nuts, I'm not single. It. I'm not a woman. You are really pretty, but I cannot do this. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? But, no, but it's but why? It's why do I keep seeing it? Because he's doing a lot of videos. Yeah, it's honestly and consistency. Guess what? That's amazing. It's yeah. I, if. I obviously in life, like you learn, get so many lessons and consistency. I, I preached this earlier, so I won't hit it too hard, but on TikTok, hit it hard. I've literally, yeah. I figured out the trick. It's find your niche. Okay. I have mine, single dating, relatable, single dating things. Yeah. Perfect. That's my fucking yeah. niche. If I stray from it, videos don't do well. Sometimes they do it just because I like this. Video. Okay. I know that I can get 20,000 followers a month yeah. from making single relatable. As long as I put out two videos a day, mm -hmm. some days I'm only going to get you know, I don't know, 50,000 views in that day. But if I know, if I put out two or three a day, yep. every day for the entire week, I'm going to hit a million views a week. Yes. Because that's how the numbers work. And I know I'm, if I hit a million views a week, by the end of the month, I'll have 20,000 new followers. And each 20,000 new followers, I can add an extra three to $400 per TikTok on my rates. Can and just if, I, if you don't mind, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correct you. Um, remove TikTok and just pick anything. Anything. Oh, say anything. anything. Yeah. Say baseball. Anything. anything. Say baseball. Reps. Say like, like reps. Drawing anything. circles. Like literally anything. Anything. You anything do. you do. Uh, honestly, drawing spirals. <laughs> you don't. Uh, no, but anything girl, uh, you I'm do. Say a joke after this. My yeah, my girlfriend draws spirals. But anyways, that's, that's, that's <laughs> another story. So, she's probably um, really good at drawing spirals. She's getting really good. She's <laughs> a lot of time to do it. Um, but uh, honestly, it's anything. And like, if you want this podcast. I, I think, you yep. know, there's other things in life that are important and values to uphold and believe in. But if you want something in life, again, like the girl or you want to maybe making money makes you happy. Maybe it's being famous. Maybe it's being healthy. Whatever it is. Like losing just, weight. Literally just consistency. Because there's one thing that's interesting is like, you know, things compound. But like if you deviate, like you're, the compounding, it's like you go to zero. It, it starts again, right? Like if you have one bad day, that compounding effect starts to come back down. It's like in the stock market. If you look at something. People think, you know, I made 2% today, great. I made 3% today, I made 5%. And you can be up 100%. But, like, I'm going to explain this properly. Um, if you go back down to, like, if you lose 90%, yep. to make that 90% back, you don't have to make 90% back. You actually have to make, like, I think it's 11,000% back. Because Something of, like that. Because There's, of all the incremental, every time you it went up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. the 2% loss is greater than a 2% gain. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, like... You know, if well, you stay they, consistent and and putter along, results happen. And like, anyways, you got well, no, to get the Because on that, because one week of not working out is like two or three weeks of working out. I'm. So it, it's I, a, those I was, little things. So the first time I was in Antigua, I was with this guy, and he's shredded. He look looks I like. I haven't a, been there in a while. What are you talking? Yeah, about? I know exactly. <laughs> it looked like you. It was amazing. <laughs> And I made the joke that I've been eating healthy. I was like, oh, I've been eating healthy for a couple of weeks now. I'm still not seeing results. And he's like, he literally looks at me straight face. He's like, did you think years of beers were just going to go away in these couple of weeks? Like, literally, that's what it was. It was years, years of, of beers. beers. It was years wow. of beers. And I thought that in two weeks or two months, yeah. that was going to leave me? No. Yeah. I put the work in to get this guy. Like, I, I put the work in. So that's the same thing, that's right? Like, thing. when when I have a bad week or a bad weekend of eating, I am paying for it for six, seven yeah. days. We, we, it's how it is. It's, it's just consistency. It's your lifestyle. And again, it goes back to the thing you said as well. It's just if you like what you value, what you want, you'll find time for always. And that's it. Just like f whatever you want, just dedicate time to it, be consistent and, and good things will happen. To most people. 100%. I mean, I, I always, one of the things I always look towards of the, the epitome of consistency and like patience and just doing things and just like little by little incremental gains is Warren Buffett. That guy, as every every five years, gets criticized for not being active enough, not buying tech stock, not doing this, and like he just goes like this and just prints mm -hmm. money and prints money and prints money because he doesn't he knows he stays in his lane, he knows what he's really good at, yep. doesn't get distracted, yep. stays consistent, works along, and just little by little, just chips away, chips away, and that's why he's one of the best investors of all time, if not the one best. One yeah. of the richest men in the world. investors, couple you know, cap, capital allocators, whatever you want to call them, yeah. and one of the richest yeah. people in the world. Yeah. And not saying you have to do everything to be rich, but if you do something consistently for a long, long, long time, it'll work out in your favor. Exactly.
hundred percent. Yeah. On that note, I think that's a good kind of. Oh, we won't wrap it up. You like to drink and to smoke and take away the pain, and I don't remember all the mistakes in every I got alone. No one thing. Texting me, she's like, Yo, you gotta mention my name. Did you text me? Did you get one? I think that she did. Did you get one? I did. I only need two. I need one. 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 So, but anyways, good. also a funny thing. I remember we ended. Uh, did you guys see? I made, I made a song. I kind of just saw it. I, ca- I also kind of saw, but I couldn't play <laughs> yeah, it today. I, I was to bug you guys, no, because I wanted to bug you. Chris, no, I was I because we talked. Reel. We we made a joke about me being a rapper in college when I was leaving I the last. That, I still remember that. Um, so now I'm decided I'm just gonna be like a really really big country rap star. I'm gonna that. drop everything soon and become a country rap star. Are you? Be- I saw it <laughs> I was like, I because I believe like, okay, I, I believe that we could do anything we want in life. So 100%. if I decided to do this, I might do it. But you're not joking. You're not a prank. Are you being serious? No, I, I really I, made a song. I, I, I know you made a no, song, but there's a song. difference. Because I saw everything. it on the reel. No, yeah, there's a difference. The big, big difference. There's, I made a song. I might do it. I'm dropping art. Sorry, I, Cassie. We might not have a little bit of income <laughs> for a while, but if I promise, if I make songs every day, and in maybe a year, we can get some income again. <laughs> no, I, I. Uh, I it, it just happened to be I, I literally did this week so I haven't I haven't released a song yet I don't know if I'm even going to release a song yet, but it was really fun to go in there and create that's crazy man yeah. honestly like you, you uh, to me I'm genuinely saying this you're one of the more fa- most fascinating people and one of my favorite people to sit down and talk with and I awesome. actually like I know you're always busy on the go but we actually like sit down and just have a dinner like all of yeah, us yeah please off this please. and just I, I swing by the studio yeah, every yeah, now yeah. and then no, yeah, we'll, well, well you asked me to go with you too yeah. I just had like we'll the time yeah yeah, 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 yeah we'll for me it's not back so it's like near the gym right yeah yeah it's always a pleasure again always always appreciate you guys if you listen to made it to the end man we appreciate you thank you so much give Richard a follow Give Georgia a follow. Give Danielle a follow. Give Cassie a follow too. Why not? (laughs) And other than that, uh, sign off. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Cheers.